I could. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't take it no more. I couldn't take these licks. Eunice, you got me out of getting bullied. <laughs> <laughs> you just got no idea what's I, going on, bro. I couldn't take the heat no more in the chat. I had to start. <laughs> bro, you did the right thing. Sorry Eunice looks you dazed. <laughs> Eunice looks dazed. He looks like he's just been knocked out. Yo, you, Eunice looking discombobulated, bro. <laughs> there we are. I couldn't hear you guys all of a sudden. Yeah, you, I can hear you. Great. Hello, I was guys. getting destroyed in that chat. How you doing, brother? You good? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, God. Listen, big up everybody in the building. Welcome back to the show. All you can eat Chelsea once again. Um, yeah, man. Listen, let's get straight into it, guys. Brothers, how are we doing, man? How are we feeling? There's a lot to discuss today. International break is... Is it over now? There's no games tonight, is there? Um, I think there Question. might just be the one last... Or, or maybe it's all, is it all over? Let me just have a quick look. I think it might be just all over now, actually. Might be, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think it is. Like it is all over. Are done. Yeah, yeah, it's all over. It's all over. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank God for that. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know what? Like, in a way, it was good to just, I don't know about you guys. Like, I, I quite enjoyed the the time away from the hustle oh, and sure. bustle and, yeah. and just chill for a little bit and not be so grumpy and upset um all the time because mm. it's coming <laughs> it's just around the corner <laughs> it's we're just back. around the corner <laughs> and, yeah. and we're back non-stop for the next two months now yeah until the end of the season there's no gaps there's just bang 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 fixture, April, fixture. And it, matisse yeah. is busy because huge, arsenal we didn't huge. play arsenal because that got yeah. um moved and we didn't play tottenham that got moved as well so yep. It's going to be really, really busy. We've got Manchester United next Thursday. Burnley this weekend. Manchester I'm assuming City, there's more mean? midweeks. Manchester no, we've got Man, Man United. Man United next Thursday, yeah. Oh, well, oh uh, in the at, Premier at League? Home. Yeah, Premier League, I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Yeah, obviously City as well on the cup as well. So it's going to be really, really busy. Um, I've only just seen where they fit the Arsenal game as well, and crap. Where is it? It's the 23rd, isn't it? Yeah, there's there's the Man City Cup final, Cup Cup five wish. The Man City semi final um, on the twentieth, Arsenal on the twenty third, uh, Aston Villa away on the twenty seventh. That that why, period why, right there, Eunice. That that's they took that yes. will define that will define yeah. God, how it's all gonna pan out. Villa away, and and they still just for context, they still haven't rescheduled the Tottenham game. So where's the Tottenham the game gonna be? Brighton's postponed as well, it says on Google. Can we play two yeah. games in one day? Oh, yeah, Brighton as well, because we're playing the cup semi final. Mm. Oh, man, all right. This is going to get interesting. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> mad. Oh, my days. This is going to be mad. Yeah, it's going to be a, a very interesting end to the season. Um, but big up everybody in the chat. We can't really not discuss some serious wonder kids. That have shown themselves in the international break. Endrick, goal against England, goal against Spain. Um, Yamal is just, I think he's the I think he's the best out of everyone I've seen so far. Like he is ridiculous. Every time I've seen Barcelona, which is only a handful of times this season, he has literally carried that team at times, that attack. He's just ridiculous. Um, because I know Ms. Yu was watching a lot of Barcelona last season. Have you seen a lot mm. of them? This season. Uh, this, this season, I've I've not. Last season, I was following a lot, but I will actually start watching Barcelona a lot so more good. this season because, um, yeah, I feel like one Xavi gets very much disrespected a lot. I knew, so, I, knew uh, go uh, I knew it'd go there. I need to watch. I need to watch. <laughs> Why did Eunice just disappear? <laughs> Because, yeah, I, I can't, I, I just can't, I can't sit here and just go, oh, this guy's just rubbish. Is this, is this the guy you want to come in? Because I remember your big fan of Xavi previously when he won the league. No, no. And we know, it, we know, Mourinho, we know Mourinho is not coming in for Eunice because Mourinho already said that, listen, that, that's not the same Chelsea that I know. So is Xavi yeah, your guy? No, no, no. In? It's not that Xavi, 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 Xavi's my guy or anything that I need him right now. It's more the fact that, why the disrespect? <laughs> <laughs> I, he won the La Liga last season. Are we just going to sit here and go, oh, but everyone wins La Liga? I mean, that was an unbelievable Real Madrid team. Do you know what I mean? Last season as well. And 
this season they're in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Look at the look at the way how financially they're so handicapped. That is true. That's a point. Like look mm. at the way he is yeah. playing with a lot of youngsters there as well. Plenty of youngsters. It mixed with a lot of experience too. I just hate the fact that this guy gets disrespected. What well, hold they're fi they're financially handicapped because of themselves, but they did bring in a lot of players a couple of summers ago because yeah, they took sure. every one of our targets. It was Christensen that came, they brought in as well. Jules Kunde came in, uh, Lewandowski came in, uh, Rafinha came in. So he, he, they did spend quite a bit, and then obviously, consequently, because of that spending, they couldn't spend again afterwards, which is not his they, fault. They, but they lost yeah. a lot of quality too, Matisse, yeah, yeah, over yeah, the yeah, years. Sure. Do you know what Busquets. I mean? Busquets, Jordi Alba. Mm. Leo Messi, obviously, many yeah. more, but yeah, yeah, Xavi, just the disrespect. I, I, I hate to see everyone, Chelsea fans, disrespect everyone. Matisse, Roberto <laughs> De Zerbi is not good, Xavi is not good, Jose Mourinho is not good. But who's good? Who's good for you guys? Tell me, you deserve Poch, you deserve Poch. Let's keep uh, him. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 there's no need for that, there's no need for that. You know what I'm saying? There's no need for that. <laughs> Um, let's just so yeah. I mean, some serious wonder kids. Endrick is looking like the real deal. I think is, but for, I've seen, I've seen Roberto Carlos. You know, serious calves. But at sixteen, to be carrying mm. calves the size of Endrick, like the guys, the guys not playing games. Like I, all of his quotes seem to be like perfect. Same with Bellingham. There's certain players out there that seem to be manufactured. Everything they say is perfect. Every single quote is perfect. Every single. Um, action is perfect. Um, what isn't perfect is our is our star boy who's going to go hopefully into this crop, <clears throat> into this group. Kendry Pyers um, doing up strip clubs. Now, listen, <laughs> I've been to a strip club. I get it, but but this is the this this is the problem, right? With Kendry Pyers, he's only sixteen. I wasn't there when 16. I was sixteen. <laughs> Sixty. He should be doing his GCSEs. He should be doing his his maths. <laughs> his no, you know what? <laughs> if this was, I, I, look, apparently, I don't know, like in Ecuador or in South America, this sort of thing can happen. You know, um, maybe kids at a certain age get early access, right? Maybe. <laughs> Were you trying but, to say he's got early access? Like this is some sort of subscription? No, but listen, listen. <laughs> this this happened in New York. Like, yeah. how in the hell did he get in, bruv? This is meant to be New York. Uh, I swear, like, he, he, he wouldn't have passed. I said this yesterday. He wouldn't have passed, like, uh, his, if, if he gave me, like, an ID, I'd be like, bro, you don't look 16, look 14. Like, you're you're not coming in, like, three times, let alone twice. Bro, this is, yeah. it's, it's in New York. And over there, it. Eunice, you need to be, I think, 21, no? Like, not even 21. 18. It's not even the 21. UK. It's the UK, it's 18. Like, yeah, yeah in New York, it's 21. <laughs> I don't understand he don't look happened. 21. He don't look 21, that's for sure. Ah, it's shit. Bathroom. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. Oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Eunice said he pre ordered um, the strippers instead of pre ordering FIFA, bro. This is what this is where it is, bro. It's like, <laughs> man's leveling up. It's crazy. Listen. We have to protect him. I'm not even really talking about that, actually, because when he gets to London, I'm hoping that we'll have some leaders in the team by that point and they'll they'll steer him into better better paths. But in terms of the protection of the expectation, because I'm already seeing people say he's going to come in and do this, he's going to come in and do that, he's going to give us immediate impact, he's going to... I'm just like, let's just slow ourselves right down. Slow ourselves mm -hmm. right down, okay? There's, there's environments that people are walking into which helps them flourish in the first place. Bellingham has started playing Luka Modric passes. I'm sure they did that together on the training ground. Endrick is going to be walking into a Madrid lineup that Vinny has now you know, really cemented himself and almost carried that attack at times because of obviously Hosselu being the striker um, and Mbappe to add to that as well, which people forget, which is going to take the pressure off Endrick again um, coming in. If we plant all that pressure on this wonder kid to come in and just start pulling strings immediately, I see people saying, oh, how are we going to get them both in the same line, him and Palmer? Let's relax a second, right? This kid's going to have to acclimatize to a new country New, I don't think he speaks English, right? New language, new way of life, young age. I hope he's coming with his family. Who knows if he is? And a lot of pressure. And a lot more pressure than he's playing under right now. So, 
yeah, man, let's just slow it, slow it down. When he arrives, you know what I mean? Let's try and make sure we don't create this expectation that he's going to be world-class from the get-go. So then we don't yeah. absolutely kill him when he doesn't become world-class from the get-go. If he does, then brilliant. You know, we might have the next Wayne Rooney on our hands who just shells out from age 17 onwards. But I'd rather take precaution here and say normal circumstances would tell us that this guy's going to need a couple of, you know, a couple of years to really get to the, to the top, top um, world-class level. Um, let's see. So, I mean, Mudrick, let's, Mudrick had a really good um, game there the other night. Do you, do you guys see this number 10 position? He's, he's floating in these 10 zones. Um, he's been doing it for Chelsea as well, arriving in the box, getting a few goals, linking up. Do you guys see this as his new position? Because now people are starting to question, why did we think he was a winger in the first place? Is it just because of pace? Because he can't seem to get himself from the touchline to the goal to take shots. But when he's closer to go in the 10 positions, it seems like it's working for him at the moment. I just want to ask really quick. I, I didn't mm. watch Ukraine. Um, is that where he played? He played in the 10? I mean, he's got that 10 on the back of his shirt and he's started to play there now. Yeah, he's, he's actually like, he actually looks oh. good. I'm not going to lie. He actually looked good. Yeah. I'm, 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 I, did a, I did a video the other day of 10s because we have Gallagher, we have Carney, we have Nkuku, we have now Mudrik. For, we, we, we ain't really got enough space for all of these tens. It just it just tells me that even if he's on the left wing now, we have to have Chilwell hold the whip and he has to come inside. He's really actually looking really well there. Yeah. No, um, to be honest, I, I think that we all thought that he was an in and out winger. Um, and the way that he was just running into defenders all the time, just it's all pace, 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 pace and constantly losing the ball, constantly losing possession. He comes into the 10 and in tight areas, in tight spaces where he's got to be a bit more technical and all of a sudden he's finding his feet. Mm. Um, mm. And that's great because uh, personally, I was getting concerned. And um, I was like, yeah. yo, maybe he's not, he's, not cut out, he's not cut out for Premier League level. And, you know, and even, even now, I still think there needs to be a, you know, a run of form. There needs to be longevity. Here. There needs to be some consistency. And if there is, then great. Then we can have a proper conversation. But mm. it's good to see these first few, few signs that we're seeing of, yeah, maybe he's been misprofiled. Maybe he can play in the 10. Maybe that's his strength. I'd love to see it more. He deserves he definitely deserves a chance there, 100%. So going forward, I would very much prefer to have him play in that role and, and see, see how it goes. But so mm. far, he's doing well. And then, yeah, like I said, I didn't watch Ukraine. But I heard he scored, and unlike the last campaign, now this has actually worked out for them. So it's, yeah, it's just, you know, good thing on good thing on good thing, and hopefully he keeps it up. Yeah. I, I, I don't know whether he got misprofiled, as Eunice has said. I, I think I think the, <laughs> this is where, you know, as much as we probably hate on the management, this is probably where we have to praise the management, that they might have seen something in his skill set and thought, you're probably better through the middle. I think Mudrik probably set himself up that I'm more better on the wider areas because that's where Mudrik's always played. That's what he's always realized. At the end of the day, Mudrik's not a coach. He just thinks he knows what he can do best and he thinks that's where he can do best on the left side or right side or whatever. Where I think the management has seen here is that, sure, no problems. You understand your skill set and you think you're better on the wide areas, but we think you're probably better more centrally because... In the wide areas, it seems like he's sometimes isolated. It seems like in the Premier League, he's not being able to showcase his explosiveness from mm. those wing areas, maybe because sometimes we don't have great overlapping fullbacks or fullbacks that can link up with him properly. Um, midfield is not always linking up with him. But him being more closer to the middle, more closer to midfield, um, and, and especially when we're off the ball, in defensive areas and when we go on a break it seems like through the middle is where he can be the most explosive so uh, yeah i would like to see him continue there what mm. i would like to see from mudrick though it's great that his attacking prowess is coming out through the middle and that's fantastic but as long as poch is the manager you will need to work your backside off off the ball as well you have mm. to this is i think one of the biggest reasons why we don't see Mudrik on a regular basis, why he keeps preferring Gallagher, because he knows with Gallagher, he's going to get a runner. He's going to get someone who's going to be running nonstop 90 minutes. So they, what they, Mudrik needs to do is mm. have your attacking prowess, but 
add that ability to cover ground off the ball. You have to see. My thing is right is I don't even think Gallagher and Mudrick would be competing because I don't. I've never seen Gallagher as a ten. For me, he's a right-sided eight in a three-man midfield, box to box, like he was at Palace. So in my head, I'm envisioning a situation where Mudrick is playing left wing, and he is playing in more central zones and coming inside, linking up with Jackson, getting into a central left half spaces, and Gallagher's in the right half space. Um, with Palmer on the right wing, and then they kind of interchange there. How Gallagher makes his, you know, passes. He makes his off the ball runs, stretching the pitch, and Palmer comes inside into his zone. That's kind of how I envision it in my head because I don't see Gallagher getting dropped. The reason why I've never understood this whole work rate thing for Mudrick is because Sterling doesn't Sterling doesn't track back. Sterling so many times in recent times has just not followed his man. I mean, against Liverpool, we got a prime example of it against um, Connor Bradley at Anfield. So if Mudrick is not getting that game time because of the potential defensive work rate, Sterling is not exactly showing that either. I think the one thing I'd say with um, with Sterling is obviously because he's getting older and he's got a lot of mileage on, on the clock in terms of he started football at 16, he's now late 20s. I'm not expecting really him to have the same amount of up and down as Mudrick. Mudrick's obviously a, a lot younger. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic. And obviously, um, Noni Madueke as well is another one who had a great um, international break. I, t I take a lot less from under-21 football because I think all of the guys that we've signed should be smashing it in under-21 football. If they're not, that's a massive concern. And I said the same with Mudrick when he went to do under-21 football as well of Ukraine to get his confidence up. I think it was last summer said the same thing. I don't take as much because it's not even senior level, but he did smash it. He did smash it. He got a couple of goals, a couple of assists. So the wingers are the wingers are winging. They're trying to take <laughs> Sterling's position off of this team. Do you guys expect Sterling to still start against Burnley though? Or is he is this finally going to be the time where he actually benches him? I think he should be benched, but I think he'll start. Hmm. Uh, and he'll start because he's the senior. He, like, well, again, we go back to that point and he's meant to be one of the seniors. Yeah, it's just. I, it's, yeah, I think I think. Look, from form wise, it's undoubtedly that he should be benched, right? From a form po point of view, but I think he's going to start. And I know you guys are going to hate what I'm going to say. He's get ready. Chuck. He's someone. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's he's someone. Honestly. We we have to hope that it actually turns good for us because the games that's coming the, the games that are coming up right. Mm. You wanna you wanna hope that someone like Sterling can actually produce for us, because what's the point? Like this guy, this is it, brother. You you've been brought to Chelsea Football Club to do the damage, to be the clutch player. It's like saying, you know, for example, I don't know, man, basketball terms like. You bring in Kevin Durant, let's say. You bring in a Kevin Durant to your team and you expect him to ball out. But because of his form, you want to now drop him. There's some important matches coming up. You expect him to be clutch. I expect Sterling to be clutch. Like, this is it, bro. Sterling, if you don't perform in this month, there, there is no legs for you anymore. Like, you, you will have to leave. But if you so badly want to play for the badge, which is what he's saying in recent times in the news, all the PR that's happening in regards to Sterling, month of April, step up for Chelsea. Raheem Sterling, you need to step up. Because if you don't step up, what's the point of having you? Simple that. Mm. I mean, for, for me, though, I feel like I can make reasons for why he needs to step up because of the expectation. But at the same time, I've seen all season the inconsistencies and the decision making, some of the selfishness as well. I'm looking towards the end of the season now and thinking the opposite and thinking I actually need Mudrik and Madaweke and Karni Chukomeka, these guys to step up and play because they're actually part of the long term. Even if Sterling thinks he's part of the project, but he wants to stay and all this stuff. By the time the project has potentially, I'm not going to say it happens, but potentially bangs. <laughs> as Lee would say, <laughs> mm -hmm. Sterling won't be a part of it because he'll he'll be he'd be pretty much done by then. He's not going to be one of those players that plays into their mid thirties. It's not going to happen. So it, not at the highest level. So by the time this project goes bang, goes kaboom, Sterling's done. 
So it, if we're going to do this long term thing, you may as well go all the way and play the players that actually we need them to perform. I don't even think we need Sterling to perform anymore because we know we're going to lose money. We know that the same crop of clubs could, will take his wages when he's in form, out of form. Who wants to pay Sterling for 100k? Not many teams. Maybe Saudi. Who else? PSG. Even, even Saudi won't. He ain't going as well. Like exactly, exactly. It's, 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 it's very. Game. It's a very peak predicament. Like in that Todd Bowie summer, we went really extreme. We went experienced, but we also went like high wages, probably overinflated fees, and then we went the complete opposite. And we didn't have any middle ground in any of these in any of these moments. But the wages that we've put him on, Kukurea on, it's mad, man. Can't shift these guys for these wages. No one's paying Kukurea 200k a week either, or whatever he's on, 180 or whatever. It's really um, it's really mad. So when people say, yeah, Sterling go in the summer, with the financial state of the of the footballing world, even, even the Premier League, they didn't spend no money in January. I don't know what's going to happen in the summer. We might not get any transfer news. You never know. Um, especially when FFP no, just keeps, keeps clamping down on everybody. The, the market of clubs you have to sell Sterling is very, very small. Very, very small. Especially when he doesn't even want to leave as well. It's not like Lukaku who's like forcing it. Desperate to leave. I, I was going to say as well, in, if, in that instance, it wouldn't be a surprise either if you see Sterling getting game time no matter what. Just to maximise the amount of minutes he has in order to generate interest in the summer. You know, mm. so he could be... <clears throat> it could be where he's playing just on a purely business level. Like, we need the guy to play because that way we have higher chance of selling him in the summer. <laughs> you know, it, it could... Because like, you, like you've outlined, it's true. Where could he possibly go? Who would possibly come in for Sterling? It's difficult. It is difficult. So, yeah. Mess. But, but you see what I mean now, Eunice? Like... If he's played for business level, I, I need him to perform. Like if you're gonna play, I need you to perform. Do you know what but I'm this saying? Willie, he probably won't. He, he might bang like, look, we got Burnley coming up, yeah. You'd expect him. He might get a goal or two. Can't lie, yeah. And then we'll play against Man United after, and he'll go missing. Hmm. <laughs> so that's just that's Sterling, or he'll make one mistake, or he'll 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 miss an open net, or he'll go around the keeper and trip. Well, I don't know. Um, it's, this is this is this is Sterling, isn't it? You just you know what? It's been I, so much. <laughs> I forgot to tell, tell you guys. I'm going to the um, going to the training ground tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? For this open training session. S same thing you did last year. Ah, good luck. Same thing you did last year. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning, I'm going right, and <laughs> you know me, right? I'm not really trying to. Oh, I, I, listen, I I like a lot of our squad. I think they're a likable group. I've said it before, but I think obviously there's an imbalance which makes them... Well, some people some people wouldn't like them because they're not performing. I don't blame them so much because they weren't. They didn't purchase themselves. They, def they, def they definitely didn't create the environment that they're in. And they also didn't decide to purchase themselves and put them with each other. I think, yeah. like I said before, if you was to take these players out and put them into different teams with balance and experience and leadership and role models, I think they'd actually do most of them very well. But I'm very interested to see because I'm I, I'm not I'm not really I'm not really going to be starstruck. They're all younger than me, <laughs> so but I'm very <laughs> interested to see um, <laughs> what the reactions are like. Who who's seen the content and who's like fuck this guy? But if it was for Sterling, for instance, my my genuine question is why why don't you pass on the three v ones? Like genuinely, I know the game's played at a fast pace and. I'm not a player, so I wouldn't get it and all that. But genuinely, like I, I actually rate you to a level. I put, in my in my recent video, I put 30 million would be his value. People said three million. I said, listen, this is the same guy that cooked Carl Walker. We have to give him a a, a, a stable fee. Why didn't you pass? Like what 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 why? <laughs> I don't I don't understand. <laughs> like I'd actually love to know. I'd love to ask, why didn't you pass? Why? <laughs> Are you gonna ask him that? <laughs> if so this is my plan right i'm going to be obviously very nice obviously right respectful <laughs> if, if any player comes to me and says they recognize me from a video and it's not positive i'll just be honest but if it's sterling in particular i'm gonna be like come on like you, you're established like you know 
why didn't you pass? <laughs> <laughs> why? why didn't you pass? I don't. I, I genuinely cannot fathom how he didn't. How he doesn't make those passes. So I'll just be like, that's. I'm, I'm just not happy with it. Like it doesn't make any sense. I actually wasn't really bothered about the free kick. The free kick got memed a lot because it went mm. into the twin. Like it went. It, it just... went into the fucking. In, into the into the hotel or what, into the into the top tier. Oh, not even, bro. Like I, th- it, I think it, it almost went out for a throw, bro. Like it went yeah. sideways. I don't he's, understand how he done he, that. He's the only person to score a free kick this season. Even though he was having yeah. a bad game, I was like, who else is going to take this? So I'm not really bothered about that. The one v one, I've seen it before. It pissed me off, but I'm not gonna like. It's it's the penalty. It's taking the penalty off Palmer, and it's the pass and not playing the passes. These are the two things that actually infuriate me because it does yeah. there's just no reason for it there's no reason for it anyone can miss a chance anyone can smash a free kick over it's the penalty taking the penalty off of some off of your teammate and it's the pass not make not making a, a, a free yard five yard pass on a freebie one i don't understand that i don't understand that um but just a forewarning um because i'm i think the setup i think the setup is always the same so mm. um at, at the end of the session you'll get players coming over and um you'll basically be almost like uh, lined up by where the, there's like little fencing there's like little rope yeah, fencing yeah, yeah yeah so um yeah you'll see them like they'll come mm. one by one and you know oh, you'll shit. have like you'll have like a ball or a shirt that will be given to you that you get to keep that you have that you want that you get signed and mm. as each player comes like you have that portion of time to have a little word quickly before they move on and the next player comes in so time yourself correctly i'm not, I'm not by the way i'm not going there to um to do this it's just if he clocks me and he's like don't like you then i'll say it but i'm not going obviously i'm not trying to fucking you know, Mash. You know i'm not trying though? to ruin someone's confidence even more piss them off but um no, yeah but i'm you're... looking forward to seeing the players that i really rate i can't lie <laughs> your, your your question from a fan perspective would be absolutely valid like imagine mm. you going there and trying to be a journalist like full no, trying no. to be diplomatic and okay. full trying to be this journalistic personality you want to be there going there as a fan and just go yeah, yeah. yo sterling why not passing brother what's going on <laughs> Because oh, that, that would be exactly how a fan would react. And and you hope that he replies back and just doesn't shrug yeah. you off. Like, I'm not I'm uh, not gonna I'm not gonna heckle him, but I just if it, like I said, if I get any bad reactions, I'm just gonna just be like come on, what's going I, on? I, I wouldn't even <laughs> say if you get a bad re- like even if you get an opportunity to just have a quick chat, just go, mm. hey Raheem, just quickly go like what's going on with the like squaring like this. Like, what's going on? Why aren't you not swearing yeah, yeah. it? Yeah. So what do you say? Um, the, the the big the big fish, right? That you're gonna get to meet tomorrow for you is Poch. So <laughs> what are you gonna say to Poch? Wow. <laughs> Matisse's big fish is Poch. <laughs> wow, bro. Oh god, I've not even thought about this. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna turn up. <laughs> He'll even be the first one or the last one. When I went, Graham Potter and was the first guy. And I don't, oh, I, I don't, but do you know what? I'm, 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 I'd rather it be Poch than Graham Potter. No, genuinely. 100%. Yeah, genuinely, because like, I feel like with Potter, he was just too stale. He was too stale, man. He was. He like, was. you know, when you leave the digestives, the packet open, and then you come back to it, and you try to take a bite, and it just crumbles. <laughs> That's the way it is, bro. Like, mad stale, bro. Like. It's crazy. <laughs> Matisse, you better not be starstruck when you see Poch. Like, oh, that's my what? boss, Starst- my manager, Starstruck my guy for Pochettino. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Starstruck. You, we, we save Star. We say we save Star for very few people, right? Ronaldinho, right? Eden mm. Hazard, you know, Messi, Ronaldo. These are stars. This is what you can be starstruck about. You can be starstruck over Pochettino, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I, I wish there was open training access like for when we had all the all the dons. You know, mm, imagine like imagine going wow. to training and then like you got JT and Lamps and Czech and Didier wow. and all these. You just faint. That'd be better than a match, I'd say. I reckon that'd be better than a match. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> It actually would be. It actually would yeah. be. So now nah, genuinely with the pot just be like, yo, you're 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 killing me. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get me killed. Imagine Potch turns around and goes, 
You're my man. You've been back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're I'm gonna, my man. Like, I'm gonna be like to him. There's there's people out there that have you might not think you might think that everybody's against you, but there's people out there that have invested all of their stocks into you and are being killed because of it. So <laughs> remember that in your next press conference, yeah. Not not the whole everybody hates me, we don't have a relationship. Actually, some of some of us actually invested our entire savings into you. We put our mortgage on the line for you. Okay, so focus. bad investment, bro. And the portfolio is depleted. Well, it's I actually pay, I, well, I took out a lot of ninety five percent down, bro. I've got, like, I've got like one <laughs> stock left. <laughs> I'm at a point now where I've lost I've lost a lot of money. I've only left one stock in in the hope that it kabooms, and then I make all my losses back. Um, <laughs> something tells me that's probably not going to happen. No. Um, <laughs> Good to see Chelsea supplying England with two bums. Clearly the worst players on the pitch and we're supposed to want these two at the club. Sad, says Sean. I'm guessing he's talking about Gallagher and Chilwell. Um, Eunice, what did you make of these guys' performances, man? Oh, mate. Was it bad? I mean, I mean, look, um, are you talking about um, both England games? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I was in and out of yesterday. Um, so I didn't, I didn't watch the second half. Um, but I heard about the last minute equaliser and I was like, thank God, because <laughs> I was like, I said it, I'm not having Lukaku leave Wembley with a win. Like, I'm not accepting that. I'm sorry. Like, um, if, if that happens, I'm coming I'm coming for England. Like, you're all in the mud. But that last minute equaliser we got, <clears throat> happy days. I saw the first game, right, against Brazil and Chilo had an absolute horror show, right? <laughs> Um, God. Gallagher, not good enough. Mm. But then again, England as a whole were just awful, awful, awful. Um, and it's still surprising how it's almost like they've just been completely restricted and there's no freedom in the way that they move forward, man. There just isn't. And that's what this England team needs. When you look at the profile of the players that you have and the way to be able to get the best you know that it's not necessarily just about sitting back and trying to defend and all that because England will have to do that regardless. But they're being restricted on what they can do in an offensive manner. There isn't any... There is, there's a lack of freedom where some of the players just are not able to either get into spaces that they have to get into or combine in ways that they, that they, that they can combine um, or run into avenues that they can run into. It's just... It feels very constrained. Um, now, yesterday, again, it just, for what I saw, and I, I, didn't, I didn't see the whole thing, so if anyone wants to enlighten on the second half, or if you guys as well want to talk on that, you can. Um, but I was getting the same sort of vibe. Again, it just wasn't feeling, it felt at times a little hectic between both sides, but it looked mm. like Belgium was just really on it. Hence, they got that early goal. Um, and then when they did go 2-1 up, England with that disallowed goal. But when they did go 2-1 up, it was feeling quite end-to-end, -end, but almost like there's just no substance. And again, this is just not good preparation for England going into the Euros because that's it. We're not going to have another international break. Yeah. So it's concerning, a little bit concerning as to how far England are going to go. I feel like we're not going to go very far. I'll be honest. I feel like maybe um, get past the groups. I expect us to get past the groups. Quarterfinal, we could end up getting eliminated. Um, we'll see what happens. But in terms of our lads, um, yeah, overall, not good, not good enough. Not good enough. Every, I, actually, every, I actually watched both the matches, to be honest. Mm. I just wanted to see how. Wow, England I didn't play and also <laughs> watch the highlights. <laughs> I watched, uh, I wanted to actually see Brazil. Um, yeah. And obviously Gallagher and Chilwell. Um, Gallagher, obviously, the first match. First of all, this English team is bad. It, Eunice, you just mentioned that maybe they'll get past group stage. I don't think you guys will get past group stage, man. I'm being honest. There's really? Denmark, there's Serbia, there's Slovenia. I don't Slovenia. think you guys will get past the group stage. Probably come third. I really do think you'll come third. Because that Belgium team had few people away, most notably KDB. And... The way sometimes Belgium was just so seamlessly playing out, I was absolutely baffled. Like, this is not even the complete Belgium team. And predominantly, they were leading right up, up until at, at the yeah. end. 
Yeah. Um, I do want to say one thing though. Kobe Minor, this guy's the real deal. He's the real deal. There's no yep. doubt about it. He's absolutely the real deal. But he's Man United's um player to look out for. But yeah, he's he's genuinely that good, man. He's so comfortable. Um, in regards to our players, Gallagher, obviously, the Brazilians just <laughs> <laughs> they ran amok, bro. They made him look so bad. He, there's a clip, I think, that's circulating around in um, Twitter at the moment where most of it, it, it was, I think it was off a set piece and most of the English team, uh, players were on their half. Yeah. Obviously, there was no just, one in front. And Gallagher just he pumped the ball. He just kicks it. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. yeah. Brother, what happened to keep, pass it back, move forward with the ball? Bro, he saw a bunch of Brazilian players that just... <laughs> I'm not having this. Get this ball away from me. Um, Chua was bad against Brazil. Chua was actually bad against Belgium too. There were so many times he'd bomb forward. Just passes were poor. He looks disoriented sometimes. Like he looks like he does. He doesn't enjoy the ball. It's like he enjoys it without the ball. <laughs> I'll run, but don't give me the ball. I don't like it. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. that. I don't know if you guys remember that that um, clip of Pep that was going around a few years ago. How Pep's like telling his Man City players, "Enjoy the ball. Like, I want you to want the ball, keep you the have ball. To, you you ha have like, to. Have love to. the ball. You, you mean to. like you cannot hide from the ball. You need to show up and want the ball. I feel like some of our players are anti that." <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I agree. I feel like Chelsea. that's the problem at Chelsea. I feel like it is. And, and you can you can notice hesitation, yeah. And you know what? That's, that's bad. That is a bad deal. Because if we're going to come across teams where we're going to see most of the balls at times, and if you're not good enough on the ball, that's a problem. That's a problem. I, I, I think injuries have really caught up to him. And I've said before, he's not on Reese James's level at his best to be kind of waiting around and taking time for his for him to get back. I think for me personally, I mean, it's very evident we need a new left back because both of them are overly paid for what they offer and they're not good enough going in both directions. There's no complete fallback on that side. If you If you see what Gusto does on the right mm. and you compare it to what happens on the left, it's night and day, literally night and day. It's it's a massive difference. And Gusto's 20 years old and he's performing like that. Obviously, without the injuries that, that Chilwell's had. But I think definitely I'd be cutting my losses on them. And I said it last summer, like, I feel like Matson and Lewis Hall have got more potential than both of them. But because, obviously, pure profit and FFP and all these things, we've had to sell Lewis Hall, which is fair enough, whatever. Maybe he wasn't a true left-back anyway. He was a left-wing back in, in the previous system last season. But he had some great performances against big teams at the Etihad against Man United. And then Matson is another one that <clears throat> would love to give an opportunity to because I think technically he's much more, um, he's got a much higher higher base than, than those two. But again, um, it's, it's another one where it's probably not going to go in our favour. So it's going to cost us money um, to, to, to sort that situation out. I think the best way to do it is probably to bring someone up through the academy again as a second choice and buy a first choice um just so you don't have to go and buy two new ones i think we get caught in that trap sometimes where we buy two new ones and then you know it, you can only really have one consistent player play in that position you're not going to rotate left backs we've, we've had three left backs on the books at one point i remember when we had um chill marcus alonso and emerson palmieri all at once <clears throat> which doesn't make any sense so we need to sort that out but yeah, I, I agree with what you said, Boris. I, for me, with, with Chilwell, it's just... He was one of those players that when we bought him and he was playing and he got used to that wing-back position, it was almost perfect for him because he just mm. then became this okay. yeah. really dynamic, you know, quick player that could, you know, take advantage of the space and he even had a goal in him as well. And he just suited him down to the ground because our build-up play was with the three centre-backs and they, you know, they were brilliant at all of that. Um, yeah. but now it's just, I mean, Rudiger, I remember Rudiger used to make those little left, left channel yeah. runs as well. <laughs> yep. Mad man. Um, <laughs> what, that guy. <laughs> is, the, <laughs> is the book shut for you, Matisse, for Kukurea? Like, 
I, I still feel yeah for, for me like, if, I, can't, if, I can't forget what I saw in Brighton I'm pretty sure Yunus probably because he was following Kukurea at that time too I can't forget the player I saw there man like that that, that surely cannot be a illusion like that, that cannot be some sort of a like a magic trick that he did and for, I feel for, he if we get that level back I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at um so on the on the title is high wage hit list, right? In our new wage mm. structure, he doesn't deserve to be one of the highest earners, nor should he be. And I look at Cook Ray and I just think there's so many holes in his game, whether it's stepping out and mm. then leaving space in behind, whether it's he can't go forward, he can't cross to a high level, he can't shoot to a high level in those positions. Defensively, he's iffy. Sometimes he defends really well. I remember that Dortmund game in the back three in the Champions League. He was unbelievable. I think he got man to match that game. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes he has he has a shit show. I just I prefer, preferably for me, I, I would just go and get someone else, someone more athletic, someone that one v one defends and looks to be you know able to bully his wingers almost. Someone that can go forward, just a complete fullback. I'm looking at what Gusto gives on the other side, and I just want that on the other on on the left. And I think you can get that for half the wage. Um, seeing as we're so, you know, clear on bringing that wage structure down. I think players like Kukurea, Ben Chilwell, Raheem Sterling are all out of the wage structure for what they're offering. So they're all at risk. I think Kukurea, for me, we definitely overpaid. We we know we overpaid. When we, what was it, 63 million? We knew we overpaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Overpaid. Yeah. We knew we overpaid. Yeah. He's probably like a 35, 40 million pound player at best. Just a quick shout out. I saw a few people talk about Lukaku. I don't know if you got because uh, uh, I was watching that match. That was a filthy pass, man. That Travella cross, like mm. wow, yeah, wow. The way he like bullied Lewis Dunn. By the way, another another player that on a regular basis keep make making mistakes for Brighton as well. Um, has done it for England. Not surprised. And the way Lukaku took full advantage of that, it just makes me think that, bro, why did you have to do that bullshit with Chelsea? Why did you, like, you could have been a player, an important player for us. You really could have. But you had to run your mouth like an idiot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You're getting a lot of wages at Chelsea Football Club as well. Why did you oh, do that, incre man? Incredible wages. Like, why did you do that? You idiot. Now, <laughs> you know, who knows? At the end of the season, I don't think Roma has the money. It, we're going to be back in this limbo again. Do yeah. you want to stay? Do you want to go? What do you want to do? He's already saying, you know, it's up to Chelsea or whatnot. Uh, look, at the end of the day, I think we know you don't want to play for Chelsea. You want to be in Italy. But there's going to be no one willing to buy you. But this guy is he's actually a talented player, man. He really is. He's actually a talented player. I didn't see what he did. I got blind. <laughs> just check it out, things, though. Just check it out. No, I, 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 I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Oh, you saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you saw the assist. I knew you did. Matisse is on my wavelength. He's on my wavelength, man. Because look, I I saw what I saw the reaction after what he did. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Stevie Wonder up in there. We don't see anything <laughs> that this man does. Whenever he does good, we see nothing. We see nothing. We just see darkness. You see this? Just pure darkness. Now, when whenever whenever I see bids on the table for him, oh, I see. I see clearly. <laughs> bring, bring the bids. Bring the offers. Now, this is the thing. I saw the reaction after what he did yesterday, yeah? And fair, look, fair play. Top pass. Top. Right? Yeah. But... Come on. Like some there's some people that are genuinely like, we must have him back now. Like that's it. Let's just let's get him back into the team. It's like did you did you forget? Like are people are people just oblivious to like what went down, what happened, like the whole stuff. Mate, I I stand with Matisse on this. He could be reincarnation of Cristiano Ronaldo and the last player on earth. I'm not taking him back. I don't care. He's not coming back. 
Mm. <laughs> Facts. There, there, Facts. There, there's bigger things at play here than just about the player. Like, this isn't just professional. This has actually become personal, bro. Yeah. And because it's become personal, the, the, I'm sorry, it's broken. The trust is gone. Trust people is gone. Talk People talk about having standards at a football club. I've said it before. The moment you are begging for a player that doesn't want to play for your club, who's told you that multiple times in multiple languages, and you still want him to play for your club, your standards are finished. Because you are now willing to take players that don't even want to be there to represent you. This is Chelsea Football Club. There are players all over the world. You should be blessed and happy to play for this club you should be you should be coming to yeah. us asking to play for this club if you're not trying to play for this club or you're not happy to play for this club i don't want you because we are chelsea football club there's only one chelsea football club in this big world in this big wide wide world there's one chelsea football club two champions league titles two europa league titles premier league titles nah and the you, wages you, as you, well, Matisse. People that like... leave us cry when they leave the pitch. Cesc Fabregas, who Arsenal are now trying to bring back now because of the whole... Oh, man. Yeah? Cesc Fabregas, Cesc Fabregas was tearing up when he left the pitch playing for Chelsea. Yeah. Tearing up. This is what we do to players. When was the last... He, it, it, he might be one of the... Outside of him, Courtois, so is the Belgians... Out of him and could there's only very mm -hmm. few players that want to leave here, you know. Hazard left here because his dream was Madrid. But look at him in that last interview, crying, coming back now to play soccer aid, buzzing. Some of the greatest players in Premier League history, they cry when they leave our pitch. They want to come back and see the fans. So why am I taking this ego inflated one title merchant? Nah, 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 nah. And you know what? He's not even you know a serial what? winner. Lost the Europa League final with Conte. Shit game. Bottled it with Belgium in the World Cup. Shit game. Why am I? What? 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 Nah, nah, nah. Get out See, this is this is Get a point. This is uh, someone mentioned it in the comments, right? And I'm like, you know what? It's actually true. Let's be honest. He makes one pass, and everything is forgotten. <laughs> he made one pass, which was a good pass, but he's made one pass. And you've got tons of people forgetting everything that happened and going, you know what? Let's take Lukaku back. It's true. Like, as a fan base, we are, that comment said, we are starving. We are starving. We are, we are very, 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 very hungry. I'd rather we go are, hungry. I'd rather not eat. I, me too. <laughs> me too. I'd rather not eat. Yeah. Yeah. No chance. <laughs> No chance. Um, well, let's see this super chat here. Good morning from Nashville. Big up, brother. Welcome. Um, who is your dream England manager of those that are currently available? Jose Mourinho. Give Jose Mourinho that job. That's the job for Jose Mourinho. I'd love that, man. Now, oh I'm, now I'm watching England games. Now I'm painting England flags on my on my on my on my cheek. And and cup competitions, good one for Jose as well. Like. That, exactly, oh, mate. Perfect setup, tailor made for him. Um, and you know, the, the England fan, but so the, the whole country, you, you're gonna get like it's, it, it'll be a mad dynamic because you're gonna get tons of like English fans that support various clubs that hate him, <laughs> but deep down, don't. And now, he's if he were to become England manager, they're gonna be like, Oh, they'd all yeah, love it, man. Like, they'd come they'd on, we him. got Jose, like it, the whole country. I think would just vouch right behind him as England manager. I think it'd be crazy. I think it'd be mad. It'd bring some level of charisma to the team. Like it would bring yeah. shithousery. It would bring some level of attitude. You know how we talk about sometimes WWE attitude era, like that level of attitude era where Stone Cold, The Rock, you know, just trash talking. It'll be that level for England. I watched England now. Honestly, it is so bland. It is so, like, there's no taste. And I'm seeing players like Foden. I'm seeing players like Bellingham. Do you know what I mean? Declan Rice has been fed. I'm like, how has this team 
not playing with a lot more, you know, excitement. Waggle. It's crazy. They're playing like little mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Cowards. Now, Mourinho is not exactly the most swaggalicious manager out there, but England's defense is also shit, right? And I, I, I would just like the defense to be airtight. And I think he'd let the forward players go and play their stuff. I think. I'm not sure. I'm hoping. But also, yes, I'm, I agree. also, because I'm not as bothered about England, I'm also doing it for the banter. Like, I just want to see the charisma. And I, and if he was to do well, which he always does in knockout competitions, if he was to win England, oh, mate, a nah, world, bro, a world cup, a world that's cup. It. Hey, Legend. listen. <laughs> Not, night him, England, night him, night him. You, you would have to call him Sir. Yes, yeah, Sir Jose Mourinho. Win a night World him. Cup. Oh my days. Hey, listen. So, give him, give him citizenship. Give him um, the, the knighthood. Just, just, the, the, just the chance of that happening alone is why I just want to see it. Just to give it an opportunity. Yeah. Because if he was to do that, <laughs> hey, in America as well. <laughs> <laughs> that would be mad. <laughs> Sir Special One. That's what he'll be known as. Sir Special Give him one. everything. He needs a, he needs a, a station named after him. He needs knighting. He needs <laughs> yeah, the lot. The, the lot. lot. Whatever, whatever this country is capable of offering him, they need to give it to him for sure. But no, nah, but they, oh, they, they love Southgate. I, I don't understand it. They love Southgate. It's <sighs> I, I know fans like Eunice and for the you know content makers like that that obviously support England, they don't like Southgate, but I just get the feeling I think the real deep rooted English people, like you know, forefathers were English. They seem to Southgate. <laughs> really? I, I, it, I don't know. I, know, I, don't know. I, I don't live I, there, but I just get the feeling that's the case. Um, no, I, I honestly feel like you go to like, um, what's the, uh, how, how can I, you know, like at Chelsea, there's, you know, that proper Chelsea, mm. like the proper England. Yeah. You know, them, <laughs> the, the ones that you find like where there's like five or six England flags waving and there's like some baldies there with a beer, like, you know, proper. That, that I think they hate Southgate too. <laughs> no one <laughs> likes Southgate, bruv. Well, the only ones the that job, love Southgate bro? the FA. Oh, the FA, yeah. It's the FA, man. The FA. The, the, uh, look, I think he, he he does he does what he's told. Yes, man. Yeah, we puppet. It's a common <laughs> theme nowadays. I seem mate. to know this model somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> <laughs> this model is very familiar to me, Eunice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother! I, listen, it's not going to happen because they're probably going to go and get Lee Carsley or someone, or I don't know. Graham Potter, maybe Eddie Howe, one of those guys. I, I think it will probably be an English manager next, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll be honest, because um, even even with Jose, I, I think he wants he still wants club football. But yeah. I have to say, I think I think it will happen. I wouldn't be surprised in future if it were to actually happen. Hopefully, he did say in his recent interview, was it with Fabrizio Romano? I think Fabrizio. Um, yeah, he said that he wouldn't mind doing a international level management but he don't want to wait around for a competition for two years so exactly, he, yeah. he wants right something before right before the competition where he takes over which is now perfect right time now, to do it. now. Right now. <laughs> Bring Mourinho now should have given yeah. Mourinho those two friendlies yes and then straight into the yes. can you imagine this like if we actually did that can you imagine yeah breaking news Southgate sacked breaking news back to back Jose Mourinho's in the, the absolute shake that would give that squad, because oh, some people man. are too comfortable, Pickford being one of them, the absolute shake that would give that squad, as he walks in there, Jose fucking Mourinho walks into that England mm. training camp, and it's like, oh, oh shit. Man. Oh, shit. We got two games, and then bang, straight into the tournament. It would have it just been, it would have been, sure. been, been a story. It would have been a serious I... story. I despise the English national team, right? I hate it. But if Jose became the manager, I, I'd be very keen to watch them. Like, I really would. I'd be, I'd like, be watching every for game. Jose, for Jose. Every game. You know I mean? They play Montenegro. I'm there. They play <laughs> Kazakhstan. I'm there. I'm there. That's all. I, I, I just I want to be, be inspired. <laughs> or if not inspired, I want a story. 
There's no yeah. inspiration with Southgate and there's no story. It's just dry. Like you said, it's bland. It's rice with no no sea, no salt, not even any salt in the rice. Like just nothing. Just plain rice. Just plain just rice. Plain undercooked rice. Yes. That's what it is. Ugh. So when it's over, hard to buy. Me, <laughs> Give me a call. Um, um uh, Velen says, uh, back with anger and depression of watching Chelsea playing, looking forward to Miz and Eunice stream, not the game when we get in the women's team. Watch along. Yeah. I I did mention this um, a few days ago that you know what might have to start talking about the women as well, man, because they're they're setting levels like they always do, and they're up for the quadruple. Imagine it'd be good to cover one Chelsea team winning things. <laughs> that would be nice. So yeah, maybe maybe if they get far, I reckon they start getting to like latter stages. I mean, they're in the title race now against Man City. And it's gonna get tight. When we when we get to the latter stages, I'm considering maybe covering. Still in the Champions League, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Thank God. All four, that's all the, four comps. That's the, that's the one. I, I obviously I want them to win the Prem, but they win the Prem all the time. What I really want Emma Hayes to leave on is that Champions League. She deserves, I agree. She's not won it. I yeah. really, yeah. really mm. want her to win on that. Get that Champions League. Yeah. Really do. If she can get that, then the season's season's perfect for me. Legacy um, cemented as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, Matisse going to cry to his daddy Potch about the amount of heckling he got. Make sure to say hi to Stuart, Win Stanley, and Emma Hayes. I don't think I'll see any of those guys. No, you won't. And you won't. Emma Hayes, mm, I don't think so either, actually. I don't think they train there, do they? They don't train um, the same place. So. No, so probably won't see any no, of those problem, people. But it's not where you're going to be. It's... No, no, I don't think so. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing like um, Carney and Caicedo. Enzo, mm. yeah, looking forward to that. Should be good. Um, uh, um, big up to Thiago Silva if you can. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because he's not playing at the moment. 100%. Big him up big time. Um, Ash says, that's probably put the player I might speak to the most if he can understand anything I'm saying. Um, <laughs> big up, man, Eunice and Baba. I know he meant Miz. He said that afterwards. Um, quality show. Have you lads um, discussed the likely points deduction? That's. Uh, no, we haven't. No, we haven't. But I don't know. We did discuss a little bit last last show about the money situation, so we won't go into it again too much. But it's one of those situations that I don't know how many points it's going to be. Could be three points. Could be 20 points. Could be 10 points. I feel like I need to just wait for that. When that actually happens, if it happens, don't worry. We'll, we'll have an emergency episode that day <laughs> and we'll discuss it. But I don't I don't like to speak too much more on speculation because that's all it is at the moment. And until we actually know, there's nothing we can really, really say more than we've already said last episode about FFP, to be honest. And um, yeah, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to live in in the twilight for a moment <laughs> before we actually get it, because uh, that will be another season gone. And then they'll be like. Ah, yeah, the season after will go. And then that's when I'll actually lose my head. Um, True. Good evening, boys. Um, we won't forget or forgive or forget Lukaku. Mm -hmm. Well, T, that's, that's listen, that's that's me, innit? I'll keep it a buck. Like, with him, it's finished. Your Chelsea career is done. Make way. Um, is it smart to go for a left back when we have so many um, holes in the, in the club? Uh, Tony, I think it's not... It's not exactly smart from us that we that we may have to because we've signed so many left backs over the last couple of years. Um, we signed Kukure, you know, we should have been able to. I, so on Kukure, right? As Miss said, I don't think he's a bad player. I really don't. Um, if the new manager, if there's a new manager that comes in and gets the best out of him, then no problem. I just think for me, when I'm watching players like a Dogi this season, I'm thinking, yeah, that's the kind of left back I want. Just more complete, better on the ball, athletic able to get up and down, cross, all good. This guy's drifting into the 10 position. Like, there's so much more that fullbacks can give you these days. Look what Gusto's mm -hmm. given. Obviously, Trent at Liverpool, Bradley. What he, like, there's so much more what the fullbacks can give in the modern game. I just don't feel like Kukure is ever going to be able to give all of those things or, or even 75% of those things. Um, but I feel like it's also... One thing I do asterisk with people like Kukure, Sterling, um, who else anyone from that first window is that they came in for Tuchel and they came in for a back three. And like I said, Kukurea played incredible against Dortmund at home in the back three. And then he sacked. 
And now they're working under a completely... Obviously, he worked under Potter previously at Brighton. But the plan that he was potentially going to go into with Tuchel might have actually worked really well for him. Maybe we'd be saying right now he was a good signing. So circumstances change things and mess things up. But I think because Kukurea did have Potter and he had him previously and it still hasn't really worked even last season and obviously we come into this season now, I feel like that might be more frustration on that part because he's actually had a manager there that he worked with and we still haven't really seen the best of him yet. Um but no, it's not it's not the smartest situation to be in. But I think the whole situation, having to buy one singular player more after spending a billion in 18 months makes us not very wise. Just just period, you know. Having to get one player this summer already makes us unwise. Because why have we spent so much money and still need more players? Like that's that's the that's the God's honest truth. Um who cares? End the season. <laughs> there you are. My man is done. Um, anything, what else have we, have we skipped on? Um, I think, I think that's kind of everything that's happened, isn't it? Oh, of course. Sorry. <laughs> Quickly, uh, advisory board versus, um, oh. versus, uh, supporters trust. I didn't make a video on it cause I was away, but I did see you guys' videos on it. And I did see, um, what you said, Miz about, is it really wise to maybe protest or go up in arms right now season's not done should we just kind of just leave it until the end of the season i'm starting to get more in that boat i know eunice maybe uh, you might be more <laughs> 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 okay so let me explain the reasoning right i don't I, maybe 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 Miz will give a different reason but my th main thing is is that the young players can't perform in a toxic atmosphere they're the ones least to blame for what's going on, in my opinion, because they're sitting at the bottom of the food chain. It, Agreed. it goes from the top to the bottom. They're the least to blame. Do they do they annoy us with their indecisions, their decisions? Yes, etc. But they're that, that's kind of what you expect from that age group, and that's exactly what you get when you buy that that age group and you and you put them all together. So if we if we go crazy right now, then they are going to suffer the consequences. Results are going to be in the gutter and we potentially will go out of the FA Cup guaranteed. Whereas if we actually... I'm not saying we need to be at our best because <laughs> it's very it's very unrealistic to say that the fan base is going to be given the same atmosphere that they did in, in, in 06, 07, 08, 09. But if we can just leave it, park it until these guys are at least kicking themselves out of the competition, then the season's truly actually dead then it's a different conversation or right at the end of the season when we know we're finishing mid-table and it's absolutely over because we do need to try and salvage something from this season. Not saying we're going to, it's looking very unlikely we will, but there's still a chance. And if that Leicester game did show me something because I was there, is that there are some really likable, talented players in this group. There's, a, there's some bozos, that's for sure. There's some really annoying players, but there's some really talented players. When I'm seeing Carney link up with Palmer, Gusto, De like, I want these players. They've already suffered enough this season. The ones that are actually really good and have played well, they've suffered enough. Palmer, Gusto, they've suffered enough. I'd, I'd like to hope that we could get something out of the season to take into next season. Whoever the manager is, whatever the situation is, I don't think anything can happen from now to the end that's going to change the overriding mood on the board, potentially. If people are already ready to go, then they're ready to go. But that would be my outlook on it, is that these players, they're not going to perform under those circumstances and then we're going to be in some serious shit. But you know, think, what do you... Yeah. The thing is, I, I, I feel like it's not as mutually exclusive as being, maybe being portrayed. I think in the context of 90 minutes and when the players are playing, I feel like... There is support for the players and for what they're doing. They're the least to blame. I completely agree. Yeah. The one thing to understand with this whole thing that I feel like there's still a slight misconception is that people believe this is all a big football problem. So what we're seeing in terms of the problems in our results and the way that we're moving and the decisions that we're, we're having, it's all a football problem. So it's, no, no, no. it's posh and it's, 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 you know, it's certain players and it's, it's systems and it's tactics. It's, that's not the problem. That's not the overlying problem. That's become a byproduct of the of the bigger problem, of the main problem. Let me tell you, off the pitch, right within the football club, 
within the football club, so in various departments, we're talking as an organization now, right? As, a, as, a, as an institution. In various departments, it's, and you can, you know, excuse my French, it's a shit show. It's a shit show in terms of the way that things are being, that, there's been a restructure three times internally. It's, it's a madness in terms of the way that things are happening behind the scenes. There's people w work within the football club that are going to work and having to deal with all of that. So the problem is to just sit back and just pretend like nothing's going on. Like I said, on a match day, it's important to, I think, support the team, the players if within 90 minutes. But this that we're seeing now between, for example, the CST they're, what they're coming out and what they've actually illustrated, I feel like is valid because I feel like they've gone down the correct channel. They've gone down directly straight to the ownership. Like, mm. this is what needs to be addressed. These are our concerns. This is what we're seeing. This is what we're seeing that's been, do that's been, that's been done good. And they illustrated that. And this is what we feel like needs to happen. Can you give us a response? I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, and I feel like it's, bet it's pretty obvious, right? They sent Chris Jurasek out instead of the owners to actually come out and uh, reply. And that was a really, really tone deaf politician type of reply. So that's problem number one. And then the, re the response, or not even a response, the, um, the address of the FAB, which... Oh, that was a just, that was a joke. I mean, but they are literally now under the clubs, you know. Kind exactly. Of, they, yeah, yeah. So the, it's not the, a surprise. The, 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 the board, the ownership, constructed the FAB right and selected three people to be as you know the let's say the the FAB hierarchy and then you've got additional members that are underneath funnily enough one of those additional members are is the chairman of the cst and just to add to your point when people say oh are you working for the club these people technically are now actually these working for are. the club and they're yes. going to get perks and they're actually going to receive some benefits of being with the club so therefore yes it's going to compromise it's not them. even and it's that's, not even that's... perks just it's not even just perks like these guys cannot speak against the club of they course can't. not. In, they actually in, cannot. In so how, how is that they gonna work? <laughs> this is the thing. So it's not. It's not transparent. They are no. biased. There's an immediate bias, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. The CST have been clear as to illustrating what they think is do is done has been done good so far, and what needs to happen because there's a complete lack of faith and trust in the whole fan base. Mm. This is where it's not exclusive to the team. It just the, the I, I believe I believe the same fans that are in up in arms will be the same ones within 90 minutes to be backing the players on the day, especially yeah, in the yeah. cup semi-final where it's a cup semi-final. And we know that the only chance of Europe is more than likely going to be going all the way in the FA cup. I feel like that'll be the case, but in and around that, that, that atmosphere has been questioned quite a lot though. It's been really, really poor. Even at Wembley, people are, were saying the atmosphere is pretty, pretty poor. Oh no, it has been overall. Uh, yeah. And again, this goes back to this, this is why it's happened. This is the biggest problem that we have at the club is there's a complete disconnect and there's a loss, a loss of trust. And we know that things behind the scenes are not rosy. We think we know that it's all going up in, you know, up, up in flames in, in, in some areas. It's the fans are going to be, you know, only holding on for so long before they go, I'm just not bothered anymore. And that's what's happened. We're at that point now. It's been nearly two years. So, this is where I feel like the pressure to fix it from the source, which is upstairs, has to happen sooner or later. Mm. So I'd rather start it sooner. My, my angle was different because I, I don't deny the problems. I, I, I know very well what the problems are and I know how deep-rooted the problems are and how how much of a mess that we're in, right? I think all of us have said that. Eunice have said that for the longest of time as well. And and this whole civil war that I feel like it is at the moment, both of them are fan groups. Do you know what I mean? Like one obviously created by the club, one which is created by the fan base, it's got a lot of members, paid members. It's it's a legitimate organisation that, that allows the fans to speak 
um, directly to the club. So for one board, which is the fans advisory board created by the football club, to completely rebuff, to completely not acknowledge any points and to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we see no problem. Like, come on, mate. Like, that's that's ridiculous. That's utterly. Okay. If that's what you wanted to say, you should not have said anything. Mm. Because by saying that, you've created even worse situation. That I made it worse. You're making the fans, general public, look like stupid. So this is why I was getting to the point that this is not good. Like the, now, there's a division. Within fan base, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've got the fan advisory board saying one thing, and you've got the Chelsea supporters, both of them up working for the fans, supposedly, right? Now mm. there's a division, there's a different perspective between the fans. That's why I was coming from the perspective that the last two seasons have been so pathetic, and we're in a particular point in the season, a junction in the season where can we salvage something this month of April and the month of May that's remaining for the rest of the season? We've got the FA Cup match semi-final against Man, Man City, and we could potentially, if we put on a bit of a performance, can maybe get into seventh, sixth. That's still not the standard, but it's better than 11th. So I was coming from the point that just let it go now. Let we, we can revisit all of this at the end of the season because the issues are not going to go away. Let's let it go because these players, these are not your Frank Lampards, Didier Drogba's, Peter Cech, Ashley Cobb. These players are not of the olden generation where it's just water off the duck's back. Like, noise, they can get rid The players we have now, you best believe, even if you get all the support in match day, it's outside of match day. They're well aware what's going on. And if they are carrying all of those thoughts that there is a civil war at Chelsea Football Club, that's not healthy, man. That really is so, not a healthy environment for them. Yeah. The, count, the counter argument to that will be, which I, which I also get, which is why it's a good debate, is if you don't do it now, this is the biggest time to make an impact so they actually understand you. When the games are being played when the coach is pulling up at the start of the match, when games are televised, this is the time to actually get an impact going because at the end of the season, when everybody's pissed off now on holiday yeah. or we're about to go to America for another preseason, true, true. What, is a, what is a protest then going to do? Absolutely nothing. So it's concerning. Um, I get both sides of it. Obviously, for me, I'm just thinking, can we get something out of the season? Even though... The reality is we probably won't get anything out of it. You know, it's very it's very unlikely, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'm actually more scared about playing potentially Man United in a final than I am against City because we actually do okay against City. But Man United in a final, I can just yeah. smell the bullshit. I can smell it from here. <laughs> I can yeah. smell it from here. We, don't, we might even play well, but I can smell the nonsense from here. That Man United game, if we were to get them, obviously Coventry could go through as well. But if we were to play Man United in the final, I wouldn't be as scared as Liverpool because at this point, Liverpool's just becoming PTSD. But, but Man United is right up there. We've got a shocking record against them. And they're, they're so, they play so shit, but they seem to still find a way. A McTominay 88th minute winner to hmm. make it 2 1. Some bullshit like that. I can, I can just, I can sense it. I can feel it. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those ones. But we'll see what actually happens. I don't think. Um, I mean, what did you make of the stickers, Eunice? Because I personally don't... I, I didn't even look too much into it because it's it's two stickers on a bathroom stall as far as I see it. I think Matt Law is offended that he didn't get his interview um, and then wanted to really... <laughs> no, he is. No, he is. Let's be honest because Matt Law doesn't give a shit about Chelsea and he certainly doesn't give a shit about Chelsea fans. He's shown that more than enough times over the previous years with what he's been cooking up in those in those articles. And on top of that, he's a Villa fan anyway. But because he's not got the access now, and it's very clear that his credibility and his, his level of source has dropped since this ownership's come in, right? It's just obvious. He's retaliating. And now people are like, oh, he's the truth. Oh, he's he's out of the mud now. He's he's backing us. He doesn't give a shit about us. But he's going to get his clicks. Though. No, I agree. He's going to get his clicks. I agree. His approach is exactly that. And his direction is exactly that. 100%. Um, 
we know he's lost his uh, wh whatever connection he had or what was going on. And what you said is, is, is bang on the money. The whole sticker thing, I think, will be a lot more common. I think will be popping up a lot more. Hmm. I think it's just a start. If I'm being honest, I think it's just a start. And it's not... Um, I know there was, there was two pictures taken. Like I said, I feel like it's going to be more... I'll be honest, I, I honestly think going into the Man City game, this is where it's going to be. I think that's, that could be the catalyst. This is where I feel like um, going back to the point of having something to play for is going to be either the thing that maybe brings things a little down a little bit or it's going to explode 100%. Mm. Like if we get knocked out against City, there's nothing left. Then at that point, I feel like even with the remaining games of the season you'll be seeing a lot more of this. Whereas if it's not the case, if we were to, for example, get to the final, I feel like things stay relatively somewhat calm. I just you, feel like that's, that's what's going to happen. That's my, my opinion. We've done a protest before, right? Took a lot of time, effort out of our days to do that and also yeah. prep it. Try to come with as many points as possible. Do you think those... Because my, my worry with those stickers is that they simplify and they make us as a fan base look incredibly simple in a sense. And they don't actually get to the, obviously it's just a sticker. So how much can you really put on a sticker? But I don't think it's the best way to actually articulate the situation. It, it makes us come across a bit stupid or a bit basic. No, you know what? The fact we're here talking about it is basically um, accomplished is its point. Mm. The, the fact that we're, we're addressing it or someone like Matt Laws publicized it, mission accomplished. That was the whole point of it. Mm. That's it. And yeah. now it's going to be a case of, like I said, the sticker, it's not necessarily just about like the sticker or the design or like, but it's about what that's going to lead on to next. It won't be stickers any longer. I feel like then you're going to start seeing the next step up and then the next step up. I feel like you see what, what we did about with, with the rickets um and that protest that was that was organized that was basically here's a date this is what we're looking to do show up boom one time deal this isn't the case this is something that's been brewing and brewing and brewing and i feel like you have the most like authentic and organic fan right whether within the cst or the match going fan that turns up every week or whatever even like there with time this has been cooking basically for a while unlike mm. us with us it was more of a sharp one time let's make a statement boom mm. this is something that's you talk to like the match going fans you went to a game lately mm. um and you can just sense that it's just it's very flat very dead but people are getting more and more and more pissed off as as in terms of the, the way that the club is being run so i feel like this is going to be, this is going to have a lot more impact than what we had in terms of that one time protest. This is going to be something that is going to get a lot more people on board a lot more organically mm. because of just its longevity and the way that it's just been cooking very slowly. So, um, stickers now, who knows where that will lead to? I, I, my opinion, my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to like banners and shit like happening. I, I wouldn't be shocked if it went there. I wouldn't be shocked. Mm. Surely with banners, that that would be confiscated. They wouldn't allow at banners to go into the state. At the bridge, you can't have them. You can't have them at the bridge, yeah. yeah. Away games. No, because they won't let you in. Right. They won't let you in with that stuff. Yeah, um, because obviously owners... Yeah, the yeah. bridge, no chance. Away games... You might be able to. Wembley, you'd definitely be able to. Mm. It's neutral. Mm. It's those sort of things. But the bridge, no, nah, no chance. No chance. They weren't that way. Mm. But this is what I'm saying. Like even away games and all of that, I think it can it can get to that point. Mm. This yeah, is why for me, this month of April is do or die. It really is do or die. Oh, hundred percent. Like some of the fixtures that we've got coming up. You know, I always look at the situation that you've got to learn from your mistakes. You can't be repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And I'm actually now talking about Poch, the players. Yeah. Hopefully this 
two weeks break that they've had over the international break, hopefully they've done a lot of soul searching, evaluation. What did we do all throughout the season? Where did we go wrong? What can we do in this upcoming two months? Which could mean whether it is a gargantuan waste of season or at least we salvage something. At least we salvage something. So if we are incapable of salvaging something and we keep making the same mistakes again and again and again and we keep hearing all throughout the month of April and also May that we are linked with more 16-year-olds like the way a couple of days ago, I think it was another Nigerian kid striker, 16-year-old. Um, he's Yeah, he's coming on trial, by the way. I think that was a misconception. Like He's signing. He's not. He's having a trial. He's having a trial. Okay. Uh, trial. Whatever the case is, right? More kids that we are associated with. Yeah. I'm all up for what Eunice has just said. Like it's it's gonna get even more like worse and worse because as Matisse said, it probably in order to get the biggest voice out there, you gotta do it during during the season. I understand it. But I, I'm I'm at a point as a fan that I hope Chelsea can salvage something this season, man. I really do. Honestly. I hope this lot, I hope Poch just salvage something. If you get sacked at the end of the season, no problems. At least do something this season. At least end it on a good note. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if you are about to get chopped, don't leave Chelsea Football Club in a manner where I don't think Poch will ever get a bigger job, like anything bigger than Chelsea. He's, he went PSG, obviously Chelsea. Uh, you're not going to get a bigger job. From here, it's only done with Spiral, in my opinion. I, I, I want to ask, like, what's your um, your honest feeling going into that semi-final against City? Because I understand, like, we, this season we've actually done all right against City, right? But the one difference that I feel I can't ignore is Man City are in a situation again where they could be going for a treble. I don't yeah. know how they're Double doing triple. this. I, 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 it's <laughs> never been done. It's Mad. never been done, right? If they were to win the treble two times in a row, I think that's just ridiculous, right? But we know what City can be like at the end of a season when they have to switch it on. Juggernauts. That's yeah. the time that we'd be facing them is when they have to switch it on. Mm. <laughs> so... That's my concern, really. It's just that because I don't feel like we're going to be playing the same city that we managed to get a point against when you know things were still a little bit for them. Like it's not the end of the world. Like this could be the end of the world for them. So it's you. You want my honest feeling, right, Eunice? You want my honest feeling. As I said, I, I personally learn from my mistakes. I don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. I may do it once. I'll do it twice. Maybe even the third time. But the fourth time, I will get it right. I will undoubtedly get it right. Because that's just the way I carry myself. Now, this is why I keep saying, I fully have to expect that my team, who has drawn against City twice this season, and predominantly looked the better team, this is your chance now. What a moment. Wembley settings, semi-finals, Manchester City ruined their treble, double treble, and, and show that you are progressing in your mm. mentality, in your intellect, in your behavior, in your attitude. You lose this one. I'm sorry, like all of this uh, process, project, patience, no, you're not learning from mistakes. You're not learning. It'll I'm be sorry, very e learning. it'll be very easy to pass that defeat off though, because now you're coming up against the best team in the world. And they yeah, probably but... are gonna have all their players fit. And this is why for me the Liverpool L was so embarrassing because that was a that was the real opportunity to just yes. get that True. hurdle out the way. Yes. Your first yes. trophy, you're in a final, you're coming up That's against players saying. that have not even accumulated more than five senior appearances for the club in the Clarks and the Dans, etc. That was your time. Yeah. If they lose to Manchester City and it's a competitive game and it's close, I can't really slap them across the face because it's Man City. Like, 
that that even when Roman was here in the last couple of years, we didn't, you know, it's not it's not like we were beating Man City every single week. I saw, but, but Matisse, I saw it's, six, it's Man six City. Nil. I know I saw six nil under under who was it? Sorry. Six nil under Sari at, at the Etihad. I saw I saw one nil at the Etihad against Man City with Conte, where we didn't even touch the ball for about seventy five minutes. So Man City, unfortunately, isn't for me the game where I, it will be the whole season. I can't oh, we beat let them three times I, in six weeks under Tuchel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But that's, that was amazing. That, this is not that. This is not. This is not that manager, and that is not this team. <laughs> but but, but <laughs> and, Matisse, and this City team are the best team. They're the favourites for the Champions League right now, and rightly so. I wouldn't be able to put all of my season's frustrations on that game. The this is why the league is the bread and butter. Us sitting in eleventh is why we're talking about that game in the way we are. I agree. And that yeah. is what's not good enough. And that's why even yeah. if we do win the FA Cup, I'm still going to look at the league campaign and be like, what happened there? Because you can't have 38 games and then potentially finish. If we finish in 11th, you can't you can't have those 38 games and have that. That's just wrong. 12th and 11th. That's but, just wrong. Yeah. But Matisse, w- mm-hmm. when, where do we put a pin and stop and go? You know, it can't just be... For most oh, of so, so to be honest... For most like, of these players in their first season, it wouldn't be that City game where I'd put the pin in it. It's the league no, that's but, pissing me off. But you know how we keep saying, but it's City, the best team. When it's Liverpool, it's Liverpool, very, very good team. When it's Arsenal, it's the Premier League's littered with very, very good teams. We have to start beating know, some of them. I hear that. We have 100%, to. 100%. But we're not expected to beat that team. We know that going in. We're not Are we expected, expected to, to beat, beat Arsenal in the we're league. Not, we're not expected to... Unfortunately, yeah. we're not expected to beat these not teams the right now. We're not better than yeah. these teams. We're just not. And the first so, season... Call yeah, the protests. What are we waiting for? And the, fir- and the, the, fir- the, fir- the first season of... The first season of a lot of these players' Chelsea careers is not the season where I'm going to be like, you have to beat the best teams. When Pep first came into City, we won the league. He didn't beat us that season. But you wouldn't judge him on that. You judge him on the second season. That's not the the. But you wouldn't make that comparison because Pep is not Poch and, and this team is not that not that team. My point is is that when you go into the league campaign, when you're not beating Wolves and you're not beating Brentford and you're not beating these teams, which is why we're eleventh. We're not eleventh because we didn't beat City. We're not eleventh because we didn't beat Liverpool in the league. We're eleventh because we don't beat the teams we're meant to beat. That's the problem. If a team is meant to get better as it goes on, it will perform better against better teams as time goes on. That's not a problem. I ain't got a problem with this team not being able to beat Real Madrid this season if they were to play them. It's in two, three years' time can you beat Real Madrid, you know? And and that's why I might expect it. But right now, I expect you to beat shit teams. I don't expect you to struggle against Leeds at home in the Cup, Leicester at home in the Cup, Wimbledon at home in the Cup. That is the problem. Not Man City. So... We're in because we need again, we need to beat them, and I agree with you. We need to win that trophy, but we're in danger of analyzing the season in an unfair way, in my opinion, because that game is not where the problem started and it's not where it ends. Even if we beat them, it's still a problem because of the league. The league is the problem, the league is the real problem. If we get to both cup finals and we lost both of them, of course, you could call Potcher Bottler, whatever the team. It's not good for them because they've not won anything 100%. But it's the league campaign that is severely embarrassing. Because if you finish where you should finish in the league, then this is not a, this is not such a problem. We could go into the next season and be like, okay, let's go and improve on that. That's my problem is the league. I think, the league is really I think, bad. I think both of us are talking in different tunes. I think what you're saying is from a holistic point of view. And I completely mm. agree with that. Fully understand it. I'm more coming from the point where Yunus said, when he asked us, do you expect to go into that match? I'm looking at the fixtures. This is why I keep harping on about April and May. I don't care what has happened so far in the season. Well, I do care from a broader perspective, but I want to block that out for the month of April and May because I feel like we can salvage something. This is why I'm coming from a perspective that if I'm going into matches, we've got a match coming up against Burnley. After that, we've got Man United. After that, we've got Sheffield United. After that, we've got Everton, and then we've got Brighton. In between all of this, I think there'll be Arsenal, there'll be Man City. If I'm going through all of these fixtures and feeling defeated right now, start the pro- like protest, get the protests, get the banners, get the stickers, get every. Like, if that's how we feel, that Miz, your your 
out of your mind. You're thinking too much about this team to do anything for us. Then let's get the protest going immediately. I, I, I'm thinking we can do something. But we can. I'm, we can. But I'm saying if we if we lose, we I'm saying if we lose two one. Two, Burnley. To Man City. No, not Burnley. I don't <laughs> listen. <laughs> nah, if we lose against Burnley, mate, this, this conversation becomes <laughs> void. We don't have these conversations about Burnley. I'm saying if we were to lose to Man City, your anger would be would be spread from the whole season because Man City became the pinnacle game for you when it shouldn't have had to be. Do you see what I'm saying? If that's how I came across, that's not what I meant. I, I was no, 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 I'm not saying at... I'm not saying that's that's what that's how I'm explaining it out as that Fair game. Like, yeah, some that, fans could that, feel like that. Yeah, sure. That, that game has become the pinnacle of our season because of the league campaign. We shouldn't yeah. this this yeah, we enough. shouldn't be living or dying by this this young group of players by that city game. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, we want to win. If this was the old Chelsea, we would expect to win. But we wouldn't live and die by that one game. We're living and dying with that game because we know what it means because of everything that's happened in the season, which is unacceptable. That's that's the kind of side I'm coming from, is that when it's all said and done, it's the league campaign that is the big problem. Not going out of a semi-final to Man City. Once you're in the semi-finals of competitions and in finals, you've competed. You, you, you're not guaranteed to win anything. The bare minimum you ask of your football club is to compete on all fronts. We have technically competed. We want to win, but we've competed. We want to compete every year. But the league campaign is an actual disgrace. That's that's my point. That's what I'll be going back to the most is that. Because I think it's... Um... And, and that, that, that's fair enough. But mm. are we... Got, like, when we get closer to this Manchester City game... I'm pumped. Oh, okay, so we're pumped and we're, yeah. ex we're expecting our team... To, to perform, to yeah. perform and try and get a win, or sure. we are expecting yeah, you have them to try to and get a win. Hundred percent, you have to try and get a win. I'm not expecting so to lose. If we don't win and we end up losing and crashing out of the FA Cup, just brush it aside. Depends how it depends how you lose. Depends how right, you let's lose. Let's say it's a it's a tight. There's always one. context. If you if you lose it's six nil, if you lose six nil, we got we got a problem. No, we we lose. <laughs> let's say we lose in penalties, but like we take it all the way till we the end. To, then we have to hold that. We have to hold that. That can happen. Penalties is penalties. So, so where does it? We lost in penalties the, in Moscow in in 08 in the Champions League final with with the best so, squad I've ever seen at this football. So what club. I'm trying it to say is that happen. where's the consequence? It always seems the league, like there's the excuses is, ready. All the, league, the, time. the league campaign is the consequence because over 38 games there is no excuse for being consistently that shit. That's the consequence. Is the league campaign? That's why even if we win the FA Cup. You shouldn't look away from the league campaign. If the if the FA Cup covers up eleventh, then we've got something very wrong with us because that shouldn't be the case. That would be my point. Yeah, the, the fact that we're in a situation where we're having to rely on an FA Cup because we can't rely on the league is bonkers. I mean, at one point we were talking about relying on the Carabao Cup and getting Conference League football because we're starving that much. Like that's. It's, we shouldn't be in that situation, especially two years in. The first season, first season was that finished 12th. Now we're 11th and we could possibly be end up in something similar. Going into that City game, there also is games that we're going to play before then. So I feel like that's going to be the lead up. That's where I think all of this that we're talking about now is going to be answered. We're going to have the Burnley game. We'll see what happens. Man United at home, that's at the bridge as well. That's a must win. Like regardless, it's a must because it's United and it's at home. That's just that's not going to sit Bro, well 100%. if we don't win that game. It's just not going to sit well. Um, considering you what you see, did what I mean, you, know, you can't make the same mistakes again. We've lost this against is the thing. Them. You can't do it. But... This is the thing. So this is all going to be in the lead up to that Man City game. Sheffield United away, Everton at home, and then we play Man City. The 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 tone is going to be set based on those games into how we go into that City game, regardless. If we throw things away in the league and we go into that City game, you just know everyone's going to be like, yeah, no, it's a write-off. It's not happening. That's just going to be the vibe. If we go into that and we've actually picked up results, you just know that confidence is going to be a little higher. And all of a sudden, we're going to be talking about how we can possibly go to Wembley and we can do it. That's just the reality. That's, that's just, the, 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 I think, the nature of, of, of football fans as a whole. Um, and we'll see what happens. But realistically, realistically, are we going to get past City in the Cup? Chances are most likely not. 
it is a cup game and anything can happen. But the build-up and the league games going into that is also going to set the tone. And I feel like we can't slip up one more time in the league. We do that, and it's it's. Well, I think that will. Meant- you, you, we will. We will. We will. <laughs> you see, we will, you see we. And you know what? I'm fearful for is- that United game. I'm fearful for that United game. I, I can just. I, it doesn't sit right with me. But you see, you see what I was saying earlier on that you cannot make the same mistakes again. Like right. you got to learn from it. This is why I'm coming from the perspective that. That Manchester City game, you put it nicely, Eunice. There's a lead-up of games that are there before that game. And I'm looking at the fixture and I'm seeing you need to get wins. You need to get a win against Burnley. You definitely need to get that revenge against Manchester United at the bridge. And you need to go on a bit of a run. You need to if you want to salvage something. And if I'm sitting here already saying, okay, we may be Burnley. I'm a bit unsure about Man United. Maybe we might lose. Stop the clock. Stop it. That's just just us being realistic because we know what we've watched. Exactly. But but, 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 But there's still hope for a few of us. Some people have completely checked out, which is fair. There's still hope. But the point is, is that the realism is that it's pro- like I said at the start of this, it's probably going to end in tears. Probably, most likely. If I was a betting man, I'd say that we're going to leave with none. So it's a good point. If we <laughs> are being a real, if we are being realistic here and we are saying that team is just not going to get there, then why are we upset about the protests, the, the, the rumors of protests? Why are we upset about? the divide between CST or FAB, why are we upset about the stickers, why are we upset about anything? Let let it just erupt. Let it just burn down. I'm not really overly, overly, I'm not really upset about anything, to be honest, or overly um, bothered if if it goes ahead because I get why it's going ahead. Because when people talk about the the young players and, and the improvement, I see that, but I also see the language and the, the the way that they speak about the club. And that leads me to think that when these do when these guys do become 60, 70, 80 million pound players, they will sell them to top clubs. Yeah. And then they will yeah, go again yeah. because that's, that's the, the Red Bull model. If you're going to compare model. your club to Red Bull and to Brighton, those models are about bringing in players on the cheap, young players, developing them and then selling them for a profit, which is the exactly. biggest concern. Yeah. My biggest concern is not it will take time to get to the top if I knew we wanted to get to the top. And this is why people are asking for transparency on what is the plan. Because we need to know that you actually want to win titles and you're not here to just buy Palmer for 40, sell him for 80. That's the problem. So if it goes ahead, I'm not in any way, shape or form saying, oh, this is a disgrace. My point has been is... Because there's still a chance of us doing something, is it the best timing? Do you see what I'm saying? But like I said, in the counter argument, I get why they're going now, some of them, is because this is the best time to get the attention. You're not going to get the attention. Be, in the, the only so, time. Yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's one of those ones where, you know, what will be, will be. <laughs> what will be, will be. Like, I'm not two years deep in being in this position with the amount of money spent is enough for anybody to be like, what the hell is going on? I, I'd be more confused if you didn't have any concern up until this point than if you did. If you were just kind of just sitting there, just like, yeah, everything's calm. We 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 know what we're doing. Then I'd be like, wow, you you must really you must really be very um, clued up on 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 the plan, which is great for you, <laughs> but I'm not because I can't trust these guys. And the reason why I can't trust them is because they've not done anything for us. There's no evidence on the table. And that's why when you're new, you should come in and get that trust by winning as soon as possible. Whether it be a Carabao Cup, which is the big game that we should have actually won. Because you need to lay down some trust. You need to lay down some foundations with the fan base. You haven't you haven't done anything to get that trust yet. You've not got any evidence that you're going to do what the fans would, would, would like, which is to win. So, and, what's every, and by the way, it's what every fan base wants. When people say Chelsea fans are entitled... Every single fan base wants to win trophies. Every single fan base wants to win. That's why you're in, you're competitive with your football. You don't just turn up just whatever the result is, whatever we move. Everybody wants to win. 
If we were in the championship, we'd want to win the championship, go back to the Premier League. If we were in League One, we'd want to win the League One and go to the championship. That's just natural human nature when you follow a sports team. And we're in the Premier League, so we want to win the Premier League. Simple. Otherwise, why are you here? If you're just happy to be here, you won't be here for very long. Any team in the Premier League that's just happy to be here and doesn't actually aspire to get higher up the table, you will get relegated. 100% you'll get relegated because everybody else wants to get higher. So they'll just leapfrog. They'll just, they'll just go ahead of you. So we'll see, man. We'll see what happens, but it's 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 stress. <laughs> it's definitely no, you're completely stress. you're completely right on that point, right? And um, this is why, as you as you mentioned, there has to be a level of transparency and a level of explanation. What's going on? Be clear with the wider fan base, which is not being done. And the insult to intelligence is the constant move that they're making which is just making things worse. You know, they send out their CEO with a plain BS statement. Then they send the FAB out. It's just, it just looks like they're, they're diverting. They're constantly diverting. Whereas if they were just transparent and honest and just addressed it, for example, if they actually just communicated correctly and accepted what the CST have asked, let's have a face-to-face, -face, right? They asked for a face-to-face, discussion in order to plan, plan things out on the table and address the concerns of the wider fan base. If they'd done that, I think things would calm down. Mm. But they're not doing that. And they've chosen not to go down that route. And they're choosing to constantly use a PR or send someone out to do the dirty work. Fans are just not going to, they're just not going to take that, man. They're just not going to take it. Simple as that. And this is why I say it's been brewing and it's been brewing and it's been brewing. It, to the point where I think it becomes irrespective of results. I think we're not there yet, but I think it probably gets to a point where irrespective of results, this is going ahead whether people like it or not. It could get to that point. So the ball's in their court. They address the concern like Matisse has just outlined correctly of the lack of trust and the lack, the lack of confidence in where are we going. Is it really about just getting players in, increase their value and sell? We're going to find our best players going. Like No one can actually answer this properly. It seems like that's where we're heading, but we don't actually know. Mm. Clarify that situation. Give us some assurance. They say, no, we're looking to keep our best players. We're not going to be looking to sell anybody. And by by the time you find that out, if it's the wrong answer, it's too late. Exactly. Which is, exactly. which is the, because exactly. you, you don't want to find out their intentions with Cole Palmer to... and Marlo oh. Gusto when Real Madrid there. bid and Real Madrid bid for Marlo Gusto. And then it's like, oh shit. <laughs> we need the yep. money and then and then again and this is where the excuse we need the money because we didn't qualify for Europe and FFP we need to balance the book so Marlo it's okay now that Gallagher and Chalabar and these guys go because right now you know they're people are split on those guys right it's not it's not overwhelming we must keep this guy if they start going to the players that everybody wants to keep that's when there'll be a commotion because everyone will be like what wait what are you doing not not the star players but if they run out of pure profit players to sell and we're in this predicament again next summer and we need to yep. get to the 30th of June because we got points deducted and then the excuse was, okay, that was the reason we couldn't get it. So, well, that was the context of why we couldn't get European football. So now we need to look at selling a big name. Then we start to tread closer to that Arsenal Emirates era where they were just selling their biggest players every summer to pay for things that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, their, their situation was the stadium, which is fair enough. Our problem will be of our own making, which is that we're not in, ja in Champions League. So... Yep. There's a lot to there's a that's why I always say there's so much to this conversation. Um it's it's always a good conversation, but there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it for sure. It's um the it's, whole, it's 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 a deep one. The, the whole financial fair play thing, I don't envisage this particular um phenomenon for like forever. I, I, I feel like this financial fair play is an issue for the upcoming another season at most one more because if you do end up fixing the issues in the financial fair play you should eventually come into the green back again because right now we're in the negatives we've got massive deficits that we're carrying over each season next season um if we make something around 110 million in profit which is a lot to ask for 
we come within the 105 million the season after if we make profit again then i think we we probably wipe out the three year losses after that i fully expect chelsea football club to not worry about financial fair play in that manner again and and be able to spend again and be able to uh, give the right players the right wages and so on and so forth so this whole financial fair play to a certain degree i i get why the owners are doing what they're doing right now is because we're in a bit of a mess but then again, who partially got us into this mess is probably the owners as well. Um, but maybe they're also looking at past dealings, which is what is coming into fruition now. There's been some illegal dealings before where we could potentially get a transfer ban or points deduction. Maybe they preempted all of this by getting all of these players now. I don't know. This is one of the hypotheses that's going around, right? But the whole financial fair play should not be a forever thing. Should not be... For the duration of their 10 years tenure here at Chelsea Football Club, it should only be for the next max two seasons. But within these two seasons, what can you do? You know, so far you've already shown that you came 12th, now we're 11th. What can you do in the next two? 13th, 14th? I don't know. Can you go forward? The fan base is so split because even going through the comments, like there's so many split opinions. Very split very split opinions i've never seen it actually that split um in terms of like the mood around things there's people like this who obviously say um we've not been competitive in the league um for years you're acting like the new owners are at fault for that unfortunately we needed to go back to go forward just hoping we do go forward and that's the last part that you said there you're hoping that we do but it's not guaranteed and that's where the, the 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 worry comes from is when you go this far back can you actually go how far forward will you go and how long will it take you to go far forward? Because this is very different to doing this. Say you did this in the mid 2000s when not everybody had money, different situation. But when you do this now, when Aston Villa could qualify for Champions League, there will be players that will pick Aston Villa potentially before they pick us because they're in Champions League and we're not. And doing this when you have a top 10 now of competitive clubs instead of just a top four, it's a very dangerous game to play. Very dangerous. And like I this always is, say, you can sign as many of the most upcoming young players as you want, but there's always going to be more. Do you see these 16-year-olds dancing on the pitch in the international break? We ain't got the money for them. <laughs> but it just goes to show you that there's always going to be talent coming through. So you can't buy up all the talent. It's not possible. The plan to buy up all the talent will never work because there will always be other talents. And there'll be talents that come out after the talent you purchased that's better than your talent. It makes you regret the talent you signed. And then you start getting impatient with the talent that you signed. Therefore, fucking up their trajectory and their development because now you've become impatient because it's almost like a shopping addiction. You buy one piece of clothing thinking that was the piece of clothing you wanted. And then the next week you see another one, you're like, actually, no, that's better. And it, the truth is you just never actually get the piece of clothing that you wanted in the first place because you just got an addiction. And that's where the problem is. This is why you you hope that the manager can overachieve. Like this is where, when when all these things that are not conducive of you to really perform at the highest level, this is where you need someone to be able to get something different out of the team, something extra. And this is what we've not been able to do so with this squad so far do you know what I mean can I just can I just double down on this sorry to interrupt you but I just have to come in because I test merchant says that's bullshit why are we interested in Williams from Athletic Bilbao why are we interested in Sesco why are we interested in Diomande if we've signed all the best young talent at centre-back, because we've signed a whole heap of centre-backs. We've signed a whole heap of strikers in Datri Fofana in Washington. We've signed a whole heap of wingers in Madrid and Madaweke. If we've signed all the best young talent, why are we still going for more young talent? Or is there just no end to the stockpiling? Why am I seeing people say, oh, we need Onana to balance out the midfield? When we signed Andre Santos, we signed Okachoku, we signed Carney Chukomeka, we signed Cassidy. Okay, that's not the comment you're saying bullshit to. Okay, fair enough. Because I, for me, it's just 
like I said, you you just you can't. People are saying already, oh, oh, why did we get Washington? We should have got Endrick. You're gonna learn very quickly that you're not going to get everybody. People were saying, oh, we need Elise, but we got Palmer. We need a Kudus, but we got. How many players do you think can exist in one squad at once? How many? It's about doing gonna, things correctly I'm, as well. I'm going to tell you it's 22. 22, 23. This is what managers want. They don't want squads of 30 players. And you already saw what happened last season when we had a squad of 30 players. Everybody was pissed off, couldn't train properly, couldn't, couldn't set ourselves up tactically, had people getting changed outside the dressing room. This is not FIFA. You can only have so many players at once, which is why you have to balance that shit out properly. Because you can't just keep going and going and going. It's not possible. At some point, you must stop. People are talking about getting Cherky as a 10. We have about three or four 10s. Or 10s, I'll just say that. 10s. They're not really 10s, but they're 10s. It's an addiction. That's what this is, is an addiction. And it's it's an addiction for... It's, a per, it's the perfect addiction for this era of we must sign everybody at all times and we love signings, the dopamine that that gives, the fee, the breaking news, that, that, this pairs up with that perfectly, brilliantly, tremendously. <laughs> and you know what? No, it's, it's, t there's tons of FOMO going on. There's tons of, um, a, a new kid pops up that everyone's hyping up. Oh, we must get this kid now. Um, another youngster is there and he's, he starts to get some numbers and oh, no, we got to get that, that guy now. Whereas, like, the one thing that we've agreed on that we actually need to address if we are to bring anyone in is not to bring in any more kids or anyone that's got a potential, anyone with development or anything. Like, we've done enough of that. Keep what we've got done. And what we've actually got in isn't actually wrong. It's not actually bad, like some of the players that we've actually got in. They're top young players. But they need to be complemented with what this team needs. And no one's actually addressing that. <laughs> if we're mm. going to go into the market, yeah... I'm sorry, I need established players coming in, like two or three, and that's it. Yeah. Just bring in some proper... No, just some backbone. Some proper backbone. That's good. But no, the FOMO is to not miss out on the next young guy. You know, the, the whole Endrick thing was laughable. When he scored against um, England, and then everyone's like, oh, man, yeah, we should have got Endrick. Well, yeah, we could have got Endrick. We didn't want to inflate the market. That's his dad that's come out and said, yeah, Chelsea were first in line. Almost going to happen, right? Yeah. And then we're linked with Estevao William, and all of a sudden, <laughs> now he's the next guy, man. We've got to get him now because we missed out on Endrick. Like, he hasn't played full 90 minutes of senior football yet. But we're going to get this guy. Whereas Endrick did actually have at least some level of, uh, some level of <laughs> minutes and, 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 you know, decent level before being hit by Chelsea and Real Madrid. So... It's just, it's FOMO. The next kid will come along. Look, I guarantee, say, for example, we got Estevão William, yeah? I guarantee one year later, the next kid will pop up, 15 or 16 from Brazil. Oh, my God, we got to get him. I, this is... and, and we did the same when, when, we were, when we were getting Andre Santos. It's the next big thing. Get, Andre Santos is the next big thing. When we got linked with Angela Gabriel, it's the next big thing. Look at the way he dribbles. 100 matches in senior level already. Next big thing. It's so always going to be Brazil is one place. There's never stopping next big thing. Never Trust it's me, you can convey a belt. You can take a break, right? And in 10 years, if you want to try and get the next kid, don't worry. There will be a kid that's just popped up in Brazil. It's never ending. 100%. percent never ending. See, but but sure. this whole situation gives you the perception as to what the owners want to do. There's a reason why the owners don't go for experienced players. There's a clear reason. And the clear reason is... Experienced players don't have any value at the end. It's all about... You have to look at this football club from a balance sheet point of view now. You don't have the formation where you have players, the formation board. No, no, no. You have balance sheet, assets and liabilities. That's how you got to look at this fo football team <laughs> as a balance sheet. Profit and loss statement. That's how you got to look at this team. You don't bring out the tactical board anymore you bring out the accountants so the distinct reason is experienced players don't hold any value which is a big big issue we've heard Egbali say I think um, there was there was some comments that was floating around I don't know if these comments were from past he makes 
the the note on the fact how l- last year they bought Aubameyang. He 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 didn't say Aubameyang's name, but he was saying we don't want to be in a situation where we buy that thirty-year-old free agent because they see zero value on that thirty-year-old free agent. We he we know. There are some really good free agents that you can bring in experience, like we talked about Teremi, Medi Teremi. We brought in um, Ti- Tiago Silva was free, wasn't he? Yeah, Tiago Silva. Ju- how yep, much is yep, Ju- yep. how much is so when people ask this question, right? How much was Juru? Juru was very, very cheap. Did incredible Eight things. Mil? Did great things for us in the end. Yeah. Won us trophies. Baku, yeah. FA Cup against Southampton, was it right? So when you ask this question. You have to understand that the group of experienced players that we would probably like to go for, we can no longer go for because we're not in the position to go for them, right? We're not in Champions League now. So we can't attract those players. So this is where you have to be very intelligent and you have to scout and you have to really find those gems of that age that are not going to potentially cost you too much, but are going to deliver the here and now. Even an endo at Liverpool is doing really, really well now. And he's the captain of Japan. That was That's now looking like a really shrewd signing. So it's not for us to now come with unrealistic £100 million targets, the ones that we know, because we can't get them. We don't have the money and we don't have the the prestige and we can't pay the wages. So you've put yourself into a very boxed off position to sign experienced players because the wages dropped. There's no European football. And we have an over 25 rule that we don't want to break. So that's three reasons why. Names right now is no point because we can't get most of them. But best believe it doesn't mean we don't need them. <laughs> it doesn't change the fact that we need them. It doesn't why, change the fact that we don't need them. We don't have any leadership in the team. Where's that going to come from? It's either going to exactly. come from the players that are already here that are going to become leaders or you're going to have to get some leaders from outside. A blend of both would be great. But when Thiago Silva came into that team for free, he was immediately one of the leaders. That's the type of freeze or the type of deals that you have to get done. How do you feel? How do you think Italy and Germany operate? Do you see them breaking transfer records? People think just because you're asking for experience and quality, it means you have to break the transfer record every single time. That's what we do here in England because that's what exactly. we're used to. Not other, yeah. other clubs don't spend money like us, you know, in this country. In this country, teams spend money like as if it grows on trees. Look at Bayern Munich's recruitment. Outside of Harry Kane, most of their signings are cheap. They're smart or they've monopolized their league for sure. But you have to be able to find those those smart buys. And that's down to the people's jobs. You have to. You can't just keep buying young players and tell me, oh, it's because we couldn't get any experience because we're in a... You have to make it happen because you know what the team needs. You can see it. It's clear as day. This is one of the concerns in the model that we've, adop- that, that we've adopted and why there are worries amongst the fans. But this is not shifting. We're just going to keep going down this direction. And there's no indicator to show that we're going to address the exact point that you've just mentioned, which is completely correct. You, everything you've just said for me is completely spot on. Spot on. Mm. It's both, bro, because the team's not... The team The team has quality, right? Not Maybe not enough of it, right? But it has some quality. But there's there's leadership that, that the team seriously lacks. And most most leaders are experienced. Most. There are some young leadership like the Bellinghams or the Declan Rices, by the way, which we cannot afford. <laughs> those type, of, those type of players tend to cost about a hundred million. It's not your twenty million, fifteen million players. It's usually, you know, they're top. The reason why they cost so much is because they played a hundred, two hundred games at the top level, and therefore they have that experience or they've been captains at this at that age group and whatnot at the top level. You're not going to be able to afford that. So you're going to have to go with experienced players because that's all you're going to be able to afford. Experienced players are cheaper because they are they're not going to give you the, the, the profit right they're older so they're, they're not going to be as expensive and they will have leadership qualities if you want leadership qualities in young players you're going to have to pay 100 million the top players top quality and leadership 100 million 100 million so we don't have that money so you have to go to experienced players because they will be running their contracts down or they will be moving on a free or they will be coming into the last year of their contract and the club won't really know whether to renew them. That's the gamble that we have to take because the team needs, the team needs those intangibles. They, they really do need those intangibles. Um, But yeah, it's, it's 
let's see what happens, man. Um, Burnley next, and then we go from there. It's um, it's going to be very interesting to see how we perform. I think at home against Burnley, one of the whipping boys of the league, we you'd probably win. you'd probably expect a good performance, right, boys? Before, yeah. before we wrap yeah. up, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, listen. Has to be a <laughs> Has to be a I'm, uh, I'm predicting a. Um, I want to say two nil, maybe even three. Man, it should be. It's Burnley at home. Come on. It's a yeah. non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable. One hundred percent. If something goes left at that Burnley game, I'm sorry. Then it's finished. Uh, it's finished. I, I, it's, I don't. I, it won't happen. We'll win. We'll win. We'll win. We'll win. We'll win. What was Burnley's last result? Actually, let me actually look up. Burnley. They won. They they won. They, uh, it's a great. This is a great example. It was uh, David David Dutra Fofana. Dutra Fofana, isn't it? Yeah, he's not yeah. going to be able to play. So yeah. happy days. That's even more reason. Yeah, we, surely, surely, surely. Mm. Now, for me, I know exactly what I'm saying in my preview. <laughs> I'm already picturing. I'm already picturing a win. I, I can't mm. picture anything else. I'm sorry. <laughs> I cannot picture anything else. I cannot. I am picturing a big fat W. Because any other picture, I may not as well watch the game. Like, seriously, if if, <laughs> if I'm contemplating that there is some possibility of us not getting a W in this match, I, I may as well not talk about Chelsea for the rest of the week until the next fixture next fixture comes in. Because what's the point? And if we do end up losing, let's say, for example, we do end up losing. No, I'm not. I'm not. No, it's no, over. No, no, it's no, no, no. over. I'm not, con I'm not contemplating over. it. I'm good. We're going to win the game, guys. We're going to we win, the game. To. We have to. win the game. We have to. I'm fully expecting to win. I'm fully expecting to win. We're going to win the game. Fully Luka expect. Modric is a great example. I mean, some people feel like he would stagnate the development of our young players. I don't think he'd stagnate. I think he'd improve them. He'd improve him. He's That's he's a bo it's borderline like bringing in a technical coach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think Enzo and Caicedo they only get better if someone like Modric was around. I don't see how they'd get worse because you wouldn't you wouldn't play him every game, but you, he would come in with that understanding. But what he'd do for them on the training pitch, I think he'd improve them quite a lot. But you see, Modric is of an age right now where he's not. He's definitely not at his prime or in his peak any longer. Mm. It it'd be ideal to get experienced players in their peak, on a level yeah, yeah, yeah. where they're setting the levels in training. Like mm. now, the young boys have to keep up because clearly this guy's miles ahead. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then that's going to spur the growth and development in those young players because now they have something to chase and they have something to try and keep up with. Um, Modric can I, like someone like Modric at his age, even Tony Cruz, whoever will have the understanding and expertise to be able to try and show, but like in terms of explanation, but they won't be able to apply because they're just not at that level any longer like they used to be, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Um, but the fact that at Real Madrid is a different story, having kept Modric and having kept Tony Cruz for this long, right? They were in, they were at this, at that club in their prime, at their peak, and they've just still been there no matter what. So they're still setting the levels no matter what. So whoever's coming through, like the players that they have now, have already gone through that process. Yeah. And now Modric and Cruz have come to their age and their levels. Well, the, the new crop of players are ready. That's it. The development's done. Now mm. they're going to take it and run with it. So that's, that's the most important thing. That's what's needed. See, a Modric and Cruz would be fantastic it would really be fantastic but this is where once again i know at least half of the fan base as soon as let's say for argument say cruz plays for us in midfield and he gets isolated he gets run over there is massive gaps between defense and midfield and cruz can't cover all the ground i know 100 percent some parts of our fan base will go, what a waste of money. Why did we get Cruz? What a grandpa he is. Look what we do with Thiago Silva. Look at the exact treatment that we give to Thiago Silva. This is where players like Jorginho never got any value at Chelsea Football Club for some parts of the fan base. This is where...
players like Gallagher gets the value because he's able to cover ground. We need... Look at what Nigelsman's done coming in the last few matches. Bro, Brought Jeremy back McMahon. Tony Cruz. And look how compact... He fully understands the flaws and the strengths of the team. And yeah. he is getting them to play in that manner. He knows Tony Cruz ain't going to be covering all the ground. So what does he do? He makes sure the defense is closer to Tony Cruz so that if you do lose the ball, Cruz don't need to run everywhere. He's only covering small parts of the area. But what are you doing with Cruz? Is with the ball, he's able to distribute the passes to the attacking players like Musiala, like Gritz. But no, at Chelsea Football Club, we need runners. It depends on the manager, isn't power. it? It depends on the manager. This is why the manager has to match the team that you assemble. And very, very rarely do we actually have that situation where the look, manager look at matches Fernandes, the team. Matisse. Look at Enzo Fernandez, Matisse. Look at Enzo Fernandez. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, we're not getting you know, the best out of him. You wouldn't pair Lampard with Jorginho. Probably why Lampard wanted Rice, so he could be more expansive. This is the thing. We, we always have a mismatch. And some players suit the manager, but some players don't. Because we're constantly changing managers and we're constantly changing players. So it's always a mix, which is which is the biggest problem. One of the biggest problems. So, but anyway, uh, we're going to wrap up. <laughs> We've got through a lot of stuff today. Mm. Um, let me go through these last few Super Chats, actually, before we go towards the end. Um, let's see. We can't seem to cross the line um, against big teams. We go into other games thinking we might get killed. And by the end, it's a draw. That feels like a loss. Yeah, it's been this. It's been the story of a lot of games. Man City, well, Man City away, Arsenal at home. Um, for sure, those two particularly stand out to me as games where it did feel like a loss in the end. But we ended up getting a point where we could have won. Um, they're gonna sell Gallagher if we like it or not. I still think it's in Gallagher's hands. I think that's. I think you guys may have said this as well, probably I on your so, own. Yeah. It's in Gallagher's hands. If he doesn't want to move and Poch stays and keeps playing him, then he'll just see out his contract and then it's up to them if they want to lose a £40 million asset on a on a free, um, which I don't think they would. So then they'd probably give him the contract and then he'd stay. Um, now, if a new manager comes in and Gallagher's not the focal point, that's when I think Gallagher Different goes. Different story. Yeah, yep. because he needs game then time. He'll staying. initiate that. So. Exactly, because he wants to be getting game time for the England squad and all that stuff. So... That's that's the way I see that one going. Um, the problem is not experience, it's quality. We are not buying quality. Too many average players. The Sassy, Connor, Chilwell, Sterling, Sanchez, all experienced players, but not quality. Yeah, there was a list that somebody threw up before about players that we signed that was experienced. The only person on that list that I think had leadership qualities was meant to be Koulibaly. Bamiyang was not a great captain at Arsenal, in my opinion. He's turning up late all the time. Like it's just, He's just not captain material. Sterling was never captain material. Kukure is not captain material. Who else was on that list? Chilwell, not captain material. So you're right when you say there's no point signing experienced players just for the sake of it. They should actually have some sort of leadership qualities to help the young players. There's no point signing experienced players who, one, are not world-class, and then two, don't have any leadership qualities to actually help the young players. That's just that's just pointless. So I agree with that. But our, our examples, unfortunately, are not great. We didn't sign them. For leadership, those guys. Kulabali, I think, was captain at Napoli, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean and Senegal. And, yeah, and exactly. And Senegal as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. We're gonna wrap up there. Um, big up your damn selves. Make sure you smash up the likes, make sure you subscribe. Miz, let the people know where to find you, bro. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure indeed. The other side of the coin, subscribe. <laughs> 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 Brilliant. Eunice, Eunice, let the people know where to find you, bro. It's been a pleasure. Eunice Talks Football. Subscribe. <laughs> you, guys are no, you, can't, you can't copy me, bro. I'm Come not going to ask the players about Malang <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask the players about Malang to be honest, because I don't think they oh, even God. know who Malang even is. Some of them. They probably don't know who he is. So he I think he's been pushed to the under 23s, isn't he? To train with them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna waste potential words on such a question <laughs> there's plenty of other things to potentially ask um than that but yeah until next time big up your damn selves in a bit people peace what a show what 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 drama in the comments <laughs> <laughs>